Hi. Oh my god. What's up? What's up? Yeah, I saw I saw your word in the chat. <laughs> How are you doing? That was I said that weirdly. Sorry. Pardon me. I can't speak properly. <laughs> I am pretty tired today, but it's cool. It's cool. It's nothing I haven't experienced before, you know. around 10 a.m. I believe maybe four hours <laughs> like tops five but I'm 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 fine <laughs> I'm uh, interested in seeing how long this will take because yesterday's episode went by so quickly it's like i spent less time on an episode with nine parts than like two episodes with a total of six parts for some reason those last four parts were just fucking awful it was like three hours per part and i was just like what the fuck but i didn't want to like split it in two and i just sat up oh, way too long <clears throat> anyways <laughs> Last night was fun though. I had a lot of fun with that case. That case is so good. Uh, this is when shit will start to get real. Okay, you know what? I might just get straight into it, because why not? We... Let's just get started, I guess. The Forgotten Turnabout. Indeed. Oh my god, that's great! From here on out, let the council begin! Let our members discuss this matter with a clear conscience of the goddess of law. Today's deliberation shall be about Miles Edgeworth's aptitude and ability as a prosecutor. Who are you? Why are you wearing that raincoat? Oh, that's great. Fan cases. Never even thought about that. Maybe I'll look into it. Okay, but like, why is the... Uh, why is the chessboard empty? That's what I want to know. Like, why is it empty? Where where did the chess pieces go? Edgeworth, what are you doing to the chess pieces? <laughs> Calm down. You're getting dust everywhere. I've already cleaned this room three times since this morning. Well, now you'll need to do it a fourth time. The way to come, sir. What if they actually take your badge? Because <laughs> it doesn't have his feet in his life. Well, he's around, you know. I don't... I don't know if you will see him this episode. Or if it's like the next one. I'm a bit like fuzzy on the details there. A decision has not yet been made. But it looks like it's pretty much decided. 
Don't you remember what Judge Courtney said? Oh boy. Prosecutor Edgeworth, the PIC has you in its sights. They will receive a report on everything you did here today. And you will most likely be required to appear before them. I have been ordered to attend the meeting. That is all. I hate this, sir. I won't be able to work with you anymore. As a detective, perhaps you should should welcome this turn of events. You would no longer have to work with such a troublesome prosecutor as myself. Why would you say something like that, sir? The problem is with the PIC and their false accusations. Mr. Edgeworth, don't tell me you actually want to become a defense attorney. Because you can't do that. Being a prosecutor is exactly what makes you a prosecutor Edgeworth, sir. A defense attorney, huh? I became a prosecutor because of the incident where I lost my father. However, the reason I became interested in the legal world was because my father, who passed away, had been a defense attorney. To fight crime as a prosecutor, or to save people as a defense attorney, I want you to think carefully about how you want to live your life from now on. You're listening, sir. I don't like this one bit. There is no need for you to be so pessimistic. Maybe my replacement will be more lenient during your salary assessments. Uh, I see. A way I can eat more than just instant noodles every day. Oh, gumshoe. And what am I saying? That's not the point here. He was actually imagining it. We're busy right now. Come back later, pal. Paging Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. and Mr. Miles Edgeworth in here? Mr. Edgeworth is busy now. I'll listen to whatever you have to say later, pal. Hmm. This isn't good. Your face has become all red. Um, a red face, a red face. Um, like I said, we're kind of busy right now, so... Oh, it's great. Can you- can you do me a favor and uh, go and examine the step ladder in like the, the backyard area? I need to know what he says. <laughs> if he is team step ladder or not, because if he is team step ladder, then there is some- There is some discrepancy between that trials and tribulations case and He doesn't say anything? Are you sure? I rec I swear I recall checking it last time I played it and he said something. He talks about the wall behind it. Ah. Okay. I got it. You have a tummy ache, right? This calls for an injection stat. Please roll up your sleeves. Hey. No, no, no. I'm perfectly healthy. Who might you be? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Karin Jensen. Karen. Ka Karen? Ka like, <laughs> I'm a registered nurse at the Die Young. <laughs> at the Die Young Hospital. I'm sorry, but nobody here is sick. You must have the wrong room. Are you Mr. Miles Edgeworth? You have such a great- you have such great wrinkles between your brow. Could it be lupus? This calls for an injection. I it's not lupus. Just tell me what business you have with me. Ah, yes, yes. Actually, there's someone who would like to see you. We gotta know where he's- exactly! Like, his father was team, team stepladder too. So I just wanna know, like, where he stands. Please wait a moment. I'll call them here right now. Wait. She left, sir. Wonder who she's going to bring. Hmm, if she's bringing someone from the hospital, could it be a patient, sir? Maybe it's someone who was traumatized by your harsh words. He comments on the stone wall behind the ladder. Oh my god. Damn it. What is that supposed to mean? See? When you glare at me like that, it feels like I'm going to have a heart attack. 
You could send someone to the hospital with that. <laughs> Is it really that bad? I'm just being my normal self, though. Damn it. I swear I could remember something. Oh well. That's fine. Huh, this is interesting because yesterday I kind of like, um, said that, like, uh, I low-key suspected that Edgeworth might be autistic. But here, considering he is like, I'm just being my normal self, autistic people, we have a tendency to have like a resting bitch face. Like, really. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know, it's just like making sense. It may not be. Maybe it's just a headcanon for myself. I don't know, but. Sorry for the wait. Well, what do you think? What do I think? Um, do you not recognize me? Now that she mentions it, I feel like I've met her before. Um, this card. Your name was written on it. Do you know who I am? Mr. Edgeworth, maybe you really did send her to the hospital. Of course not. But this is your business card, sir. It clearly says, Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth. Mm -hmm. That's true. I am terribly sorry. I am, um, well... The truth is, this girl suffers from memory loss. Memory loss? Yes, that seems to be the case. Uh, her parents should be worried sick right now. They probably haven't been able to sleep. I doubt they've gotten more than eight hours. Isn't that plenty of sleep? I see. It sure sounds horrible. But it's alright now. Since she has that business card, she must be an acquaintance of Miss Regworth's. Just leave her to us, pal. Right, Miss Regworth? Indeed. You might be able to verify her identity, at least. Would you really do that for me? First, I'd like you to tell us everything that you know. That's our Mr. Edgeworth. You have nothing to worry about now, miss. Good grief. But still, where to begin? What should I ask her first? Miss, do you remember your name? My name? Ah, okay, I see. I guess I probably was just too tired, considering I sat up like the entire night just finishing that case or something. I don't remember. I'm terribly sorry. She's been like this ever since yesterday. Gumshoe is Team Ladder, that's what it- Okay, Gumshoe is Team Ladder. Well, of course he is. But so is Edgeworth! <laughs> Edgeworth is also Team Ladder, that doesn't make sense! I swear, like, he's just doing it out of spite. <laughs> she's been like this ever since yesterday, you know? Hmm, so you found her yesterday. Wow, that's amazing! How'd you know? Uh, what a tiresome woman. I found her stumbling late last night, so I took her in. I wanted to help her out, so I looked through her things. So that's how you found my business card. Did she have anything else with her? Nothing to reveal her name or address. Huh? But! She was wearing this when I found her. It's an unusual design, don't you think? What? It's badges. What? The Yatagura suit. It means... It, it couldn't be. Are you... K? K? You are K, right. I am K. K, don't you remember me? I mean, you'd always call me Gummy, pal. Gummy? I wouldn't call one of my elders something so rude. So sorry, what a horrible thing I did. I feel like my heart is going to burst from guilt. Just, just what happened to you, pal? You've become so sensitive. Like you're the sensitive, the delicate and frail. 
You're not even Kay anymore. You're someone else, pal. Watch your words, detective. If you say that, it almost sounds like Kay isn't sensitive or delicate at all. No, I can't deny there is some truth to what he says. Um, what sort of person was I? Before I lost my memory. Well, for starters, your name was Kay Faraday. Listen, if she likes having her hair up in a high ponytail, let her. <laughs> a cheerful girl full of spirit and vigor and a great thief. Great thief? Yes, to put it frankly. A great thief steals valuables from people's drawers and safes. S steal? I caused so much trouble for others? Oh, I'm so sorry. I never imagined I would be a criminal. Maybe losing my memory was retribution for my crimes. No, you didn't actually. Oh, this is so messed up, sir. But it does sort of make sense, you know. These gloves and stuff, they look just like what a thief might wear. Ah, those clothes! Yes, she was wearing them when I found her. I had her change her clothes, so I'm holding on to them for now. Hmm. Something appears to be stuck on her clothes. Perhaps it has something to do with Kay's memory loss. I'll send it down to the lab later, and have them check it out, sir. Good. I will be counting on you, Detective Gumshoe. At any rate, these really look like a thief's clothes, don't they? I... I am... a criminal. It's true you were a great thief, but you've never... but never once did you commit a crime. That alone, I can assure you. Is that... so? It's probably better if I don't press this issue any further. I'm really sorry for not remembering you. Um, what kind of relationship did we have? Hmm? Well, that's rather difficult to explain. Okay, you were Miss Regworth's assistant. Oh my! So then, a prosecutor was the kingpin of a great thief. Uh, no, that's not what I meant, pal. The last time I met Kay was the day before yesterday. Just what did she do from then up until now? Miss Jensen, was the badge, badge the only thing this girl had on her? She did have some other things, but I don't think they would be very helpful at all. I don't mind. Please show them to me. Well then, I'll give them to you one by one, okay? This is a gem and ninja mask. Maybe she went to a superhero show or something. Hmm, this seems to be a letter addressed to Kay. This is a ticket stub. And this is... Flower made of cloth. Like the ones you usually see in restrooms, sir. Corsage. It is used primarily, primarily as an accessory for women. Well, that's everything. Did you find anything out? Um, not really. They were just a bunch of random things. I'll have to look them over in more detail later. It's horrible. Kate's lost her memory. How do we get her back to normal? Calm down, detective. I have already thought of something. Oh, as I would expect of Miss Regworth. So what did you find out, sir? Look at this ticket stub. Oh, it's a ticket for the viewing platform of the Grand Tower. Um, Miss Nurse, do you know something about the Grand Tower? Of course I do. It's a super famous dating spot after all. They say that if a couple holds hands up there, they will be together forever. <laughs> the timestamp on the ticket is from yesterday. Moreover, it is only valid on the day of the issue. Since she only has one, since she only has a stub, she must have used it, right? It is very likely. Well then, let's go. Yeah, right now, sir. The cause of Kate's memory loss is hidden in her actions. Uh, uh. What about the PIC? It's still too early for me to be summoned there. Um, so should I leave Kay with you then? That is what I would prefer. Kay, you're fine with that, right? Ah, huh. yes please. Thank you very much. Well, I have to get back to work, so if anything happens, please contact the Dai Yang Hospital. What a fucking name for a hospital, am I right? <laughs> if you guys need an injection, I'll be there any time, any place. Yes, I understand. 
I don't think I will call her for an injection, though. Well then, let's go, Detective. And you too, Kay. Yes, sir! Thank you for helping me. Um, according to the pamphlet, this building is 50 stories tall. It's mostly filled with offices, though. Only the viewing platform is open to the public. Here you go, sir. I just got this at the reception desk. Good. Thank you. Well then, let us head inside immediately. The Grand Tower. The Grand Tower is collapsing! Hmm? What? You can't! Please stop! Please! I beg of you! Oh, it's no good. Unless I drink fresh milk, my thoughts just won't reach. What's wrong, pal? Did something happen at the Grand Tower? Cut! 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 Excuse me, we're sort of in the middle of shooting a movie and, um... Hmm, I suspected as much. We are sorry for any trouble we've caused you. Detective Gumshoe? I'm sorry, pal. I really thought the tower was gonna collapse or something. Whatever. Hey, director. I'm taking a break. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. What a relief. It looks like the tower's collapse was prevented somehow. Explaining all this to Kay as she is now would take more time than it's worth. Well then, we should get going. Wow, what a view! I bet I can see my house from here. It's wind! It's really strong up here. Everything should be fine as long as you stay close to me and Miss Redworth, pal. If you start to blow away, one of us will be sure to catch you. It's not as if she's a kite. Yes, it was indeed. Uh, Penny Nichols, that's her name. Okay, do you recognize this place? I don't know. Was I really here? Maybe if I get her to talk a bit, it will help jog her memory. Okay, just tell me whatever you remember. Anything will do. Okay, but I don't know how much help I'll need. Did I really come to a place like this? It's so high up and the wind is so strong. It's frightening. I just can't remember. I can't remember anything at all. I'm sorry, just as I thought. It's impossible. Hmm, her memory isn't clearing up at all, huh? I'm sorry. It's a bit pathetic, isn't it? You're both going out of your way for me, but I'm not helping at all. You're doing just fine. You have memory loss, after all. Also, that kid, uh, he was the one that was in the museum in the, in the previous case. Alright, Mr. Edgeworth. Remember to go easy on her, sir. Normally, you have this really intense and kind of scary look on your face. I'm not helping, detective. So you don't remember anything. In that case, is there anything that looks familiar? Looks familiar? Um, the cherry tree! What about the cherry tree? I was standing under that cherry tree. That's right, I was taking shelter from the rain because it was raining then. And there, a red, I saw something red. Hmm, she was under the cherry tree while it was, while it rained. And from there she saw something red. Um, is something wrong? It's nothing. Could you add that last part to your just to your story? From under the cherry tree, I feel like I saw something red. A red. What exactly? A red something or other. It was something red. That's all I can remember about it. Speaking of things that are red here, 
Could it be that stand over there? Stand? I read stand. Ha, oh, that's right! I saw someone walking towards me from the other side of that stand. And then what happened? And then, um... I'm sorry. It's alright. Simply add everything you said. You just said to your to your story, not testimony. It's a story. <laughs> That's right. Someone was walking towards me from the other side of that stand. Objection! Sir, don't do this. <laughs> don't do this now. So you're saying that someone came from behind the stand and walked directly towards you. Yes, someone came right up to me. And that someone must have been a ghost. No, it was a person. I'm sure of it. If this is where you were under the cherry tree, and someone behind the stand... ...wouldn't have any ground to stand on. They'd be floating in midair. No person should be able to stand there. Huh? But... I... I'm not lying. Someone, red, someone in red, was on the other side of the stand. They were walking towards me, huh? getting closer and closer, and then... That person, that person... <laughs> oh my god. What's wrong? Calm down, it's alright. Me and Miss Redgeworth are both here for you, pal. I was pushed off. That person, red... It's, they were wearing a red raincoat. Someone in a red raincoat was walking in midair. And furthermore, they pushed her up this building. Nonsense. There is no way she could be alright after falling from a building this high. There is only one man I know of who could, who could possibly survive that. <laughs> Apollo. Not quite yet. I'm sorry, it's not Apollo. Attention, everyone. Please remain where you are. What's wrong, pal? I'm a detective. Tell me what's going on. Sir, a body was just discovered in this building. A, a, a body? Who is the victim? We're currently investigating the details, but the victim is a woman. We have verified that her name is Kay. What? What? Cool, that was the first chapter. Love that. Sweet. <laughs> Not with that attitude. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Did you get a real case of murder? <laughs> See you in the next case. <laughs> this room is... Would this room happen to be? Yes, sir. It's the Prosecutorial Investigation Committee's meeting room. What? It's here. I had heard they recently moved out of the prosecutor's building. Who would think that they moved here of all places? Mr. Edgeworth! Kay! What brings you here? How are you holding up? We're in the middle of an investigation right now. Sorry, but who might this be? Ah, uh, this is my granny. Um, let me just... Hi there, Sunny. The name's Bonnie Young. Who the heck are you? She says. It is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosecutor. Miss Jensen, isn't Young the name of... Ahem. Granny is the director of the Dai Young Hospital. Oh, God. This old lady is a director. Well, considering she is a director and of, of, of a hospital called Dai Young, I think it's pretty safe. <laughs> Who are you calling old, she says. She, she can read my thoughts. Well, so that granny is pretty important, huh? 
I wouldn't go that far. I mean, yes, she is. Ah, uh, these people are the patient's guardians. You know, the one with amnesia. Hmm, it seems she is a bit of an introvert. Hey, Sunny, want me to cure that bad case of the frownies for you? She says. <laughs> I'm afraid that's an incurable disease for Mr. Edgeworth, pal. That is the worst hospital name. Die young. <laughs> oh my god. Eh? Really, Granny? Don't we just say that? I ain't got nothing to say to you whippersnappers. You're free to do whatever you want. But you better not get in the way of my autopsy. Please wait. We're... I never even thought of that. Please fucking kill your Pokemon so you can come here and we can heal them up again. <laughs> uh, that makes sense. No means no. Hey, you don't have the right to decide that, pal. S Sorry, Granny's the coroner, you see? And she's in charge of this case. Ouch! So I'm very sorry, but that is the way it is. What do you mean, that's the way it is, pal? Well, even if you ask me, I'm not the one who said it. This is granny abuse. I kind of feel like... I'm watching a comedy act, sir. Well, we need to get back to the autopsy, so please excuse us. And take care. It was with her attitude. We received permission to investigate. There shouldn't be any, any problems. An attitude of hers is a huge problem, sir. Mr. Edgeworth, what do we do now? We'll investigate the scene, of course. As a prosecutor, I cannot stand by and do nothing. Well then, let's begin. But the policeman said the dead person is also named Kay. Then, I'm pretty sure I'm not the Kay that you know, Mr. Edgeworth. We shall investigate that now. But... Don't worry. There's no question that you are the K I know. Okay. An amnesia K and a corpse K. Both are connected to the Grand Tower. I'm certain that this case will lead me to case lost memories. You there? Tell me the situation about the security of this room. Yes, sir. To enter this room. A special keycard is required. I see. In other words, not just anyone can enter this room. So, the person who found the body was also... Yes, it was a member of the PIC who had come here for today's hearing. A member of the PIC. If not for this case, right now I would be... This is Lady Justice. You sure do know a lot, sir. So what kind of powers does she have? She's a symbol of justice, not a superhero. It's said the scales represent justice, the sword power, and the blindfold equality. A pool of blood lies at the feet of the goddess statue. Hmm, and judging from the pool of blood, it seems that this was where the where the victim was killed. Sir, the body is over there. After murdering the victim, did the killer move the body? Excuse me. Who oh, this? Francisca! I wasn't sure she was in this game. You are? Oh, yes, what is it? That voice! It's from Karma, right? Um, do you know her, Granny? Good to see you again, Doctor. And you as well, Miles Edgeworth. What is she doing here? Francisca from Karma. 
She's a prosecutor working with Interpol and the daughter of Manfred von Karma. She should be jetting around the world right now. Wherever there is a case, I will follow. National borders means mean nothing before me. The presence here must mean that this case is international significance. You know well enough that I'm chasing a smuggling ring. I shall recover all the stolen goods and crush that organization. Then, does that mean the smuggling ring is also involved in this particular case? Any further information is confidential. I am not obligated to speak of it with you. So it won't be that easy. Um, Miss Francisca, on Karma, Granny says... The autopsy is complete. You're free to do what you want. In that case, we would like to investigate as well. Heard rumors about you. No way I'm letting you near that body. You're that prosecutor who's about to get the boot. So you... So you best run on home now, Sonny. Uh, um, just so you know, I wasn't the one who said that, okay? P please, Cranny. We need to investigate, no matter what. Hey, Lassie. Who are you calling, Granny? Uh, I I'm sorry. We're not getting anywhere. I guess I have no other choice. Francisca, please allow us to aid you in your investigation. We must examine that body in order to find out what happened to Kay. To Kay for a day. I'm asking you too, sir. Kay's in really bad shape. I don't know what's going on. But fine, I'll grant you permission. You have my thanks. Of course, I didn't say it would come without a price. You will explain everything to me later. You really owe you one, sir. I wasn't talking to you, Scruffy. Ouch! So that's how it is. If you would be so kind as to authorize them too, Doctor. Suppose it's fine if he's with the prosecutor from Interpol. That's what she says, and I fully agree with Granny. By the phone common name, the entire world would be judged. That's just common knowledge. That's rather conceited for common knowledge. Well, it's not on my beeswax anymore. Is what she says. Um, I hope you don't get in trouble for this. You needn't worry. My reputation will not be shaken by something so petty. Unlike me, who is on the verge of losing his badge. Sweet. His body. It's not Kay, sir. It doesn't look like her at all. Of course it isn't. Kay's alive, after all. Her age is, I guess, around 30. And she's wearing a pantsuit. But she worked in one of the offices in this, in this building. So her identity is still unknown. The question now becomes, why did the police believe her name was Kay? There doesn't seem to be anything in this pocket. This pocket has holes in it, sir. Judging by how the cloth was pierced, she must have been stabbed by some sharp object. Or your coins would fall out of those ho holes, sir. Detective, haven't you ever heard of a wallet? Of course I have, sir. I just use my pockets, though. Most people do, right? Never mind. There's some blood on her head. Maybe she was hit with something. We don't know that for sure. Our investigation will ultimately clear that up. Something seems to be pinned to her jacket. Hmm, it's made out of purple cloth. See, it looks like it's been forcibly torn off, doesn't it? There is a burn mark on her hand. Is it connected to the cause of death? No, it appears to be an old scar. She probably got it a long time ago. Hmm, it seems there is something in her hand, detective. Could you open her hand for me? Yes, sir. Understood. This is... Why, no. This must be a gift card from a department store. It seems to be a key card. Uh, uh, why? The 
question is, what was this key card for? The left side of her white jacket has been stained a deep red. This jacket. The buttons are on the right side. Is that normal, sir? All of my clothes have the button on the right side. For women, it is normal to have them on the left side. Stretchworth, you really do know everything. That's just common knowledge. Hmm, there doesn't seem to be anything out of place. Hmm? There's something white in her pockets. Her gloves, pure white ones. One for each hand, sir. They don't seem to be dirty. Could they be the victims? The left side of her white jacket has been stained a deep red. Oh. I already- that's the one I did, okay. I wanted to check her hand, but apparently not. This notebook. Huh? Isn't that Kay's promise notebook? This is a notebook she wrote all her promises to her father in. It really takes me back, sir. I mean, I- 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 I knew about it, but I didn't know- Or I knew there was a difference, but I didn't know what the difference- Like, like which side was which, you know. But I knew there was a difference. I'm just saying, autistic Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> yes. Never take things from a stranger. Never go anywhere with a stranger. When Kay was young, she and her father wrote the, the promises they made in this notebook. Most good people would smile, even people you don't know. Never cry in front of strangers. Always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. However, why is this? Why is it in a place like this? Oh, now that you mention it, I once heard something from Detective Bad a long time ago. It seems that before anyone had noticed, Case mem Memento had gone missing. What? So a piece of evidence that was in police custody went missing. Detective Bad frantically searched all over for it, but it seems he never found it. What could this mean? Why was the missing notebook found here? You there? Do you happen to know anything about this notebook? The victim was carrying this notebook when we found her. That was the only evidence we had to identify the body. So that's why you called her Kay. What a misleading victim, huh? Why did you have Kay's notebook? I sure would like to have some information on the victim's identity, though. Could this be the murder weapon, sir? Three-pronged candelabra. It's consistent with the number of stab wounds. She was probably stabbed with by the, by the prongs of the candelabra. A candy zebra? I'm afraid it's not quite what you're imagining, detective. A candelabra is a candlestick holder with multiple arms. Uh, so it's a candle holder. You know, one time I forgot to pay my electric bill, and I had I had to get by only with candles. See. It's because of things like this that I don't actually believe Miles to be Team Ladder. <laughs> I can't allow bro. <laughs> what time period are you from? Anyways, the deuce. Just a minute. No, wait, hold on. Uh, let me check my stuff. What does this letter say? I promise that I will get, get it back for you. Your most precious memory. Jill. It's, it's logic, apparently. Security key card. There we go. <clears throat> Perhaps the key card the victim was holding is for this room. I'll go find out, sir.
Miss Redworth, on this room security system, we were able to retrieve the data from the, of the victim's card. So that means the victim was able to freely enter this room. Does the card actually belong to the victim? Of course. Yes, of course. Okay, hold on. Uh, do I have anything in here now? <laughs> Connect security, gig like examine notepad. Um. Oh, that's what I have to do, of course. Dum dum. It's the flower. And the purple flower Kay had with her. I wonder if that originally belonged to the victim. Now that you mention it, the cloth does look the same as the one on the pin. Yes, let's compare them without delay. It's a perfect match. It's a perfect match, sir. Way to go, Miss Redworth. And the fact that this flower belongs to the victim means... That can only mean that K Faraday came into contact with the victim. And about that corsage, it looks like it was possibly ripped off. There is a possibility that K Faraday is connected to this case, and depending on the situation, we may have to consider her a suspect. What did you say? There's no way she did it. It's unthinkable. K could never do that, sir. However, it's true we have no evidence to deny that claim. It's nothing more than a possibility at the moment. Isn't that right, Miles Edgeworth? Indeed, for better or for worse. There we go, finally. So the victim's identity remains unknown. Um, should you really still be calling me Kay? Of course! What are you saying, pal? Thank you, but then... What about that woman? She is someone who you may have killed. That's all we know. There's no way that's true. Right, Mr. Edgeworth? I also do not believe you killed her. You are such a naive man, Miles Edgeworth. Who this? Here I come to save the day. Hmm, that voice. Ah, oh, of course. Don't be afraid anymore, for the best prosecutor is here today! Pardon the interruption, God, Courtney. Fucking Lee! <laughs> I hate you so much, you're so annoying! Mr. Edgeworth, get away from the- Can my fucking neighbor give me a fucking break? I don't care about your fucking TV, man. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, get away from the victim! I have inherited her dying wish. No one asked for you. Hmm. Did you know the victim? Just as I thought. The goddess of law will surely reveal the truth to us. So please, rest in peace. That's right, Justine. Now that I'm here, everything will be a-okay. The culprit will rue the day he crossed paths with me. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, who is this fool of a man? Oh, oh, why is she glaring at me? You are Francisca von Karma, am I correct? I apologize for my late introduction. I am Justine Courtney. And the deceased individual is... Attorney Jill Crane, one of the members of the Prosecutorial Investigation Committee. I see. So that's why she had the key card. I take it you, I take it you're in charge of this case. That's right. And with me in charge, this case is as good as our. That reminds me, I haven't caught your name yet. If you just wanted to know my name, you didn't have to. Work. Just state your name. I will not tolerate any unnecessary remarks. <laughs> Sebastian the best. It seems the pecking order has been decided. 
Mr. Sebastian the best. Here, this is from Granny. This is the yacht up to your porch. Ha <laughs> ha It seems you've been bested, Mr. Edgeworth. This wasn't a competition to begin with. My job is done. May we meet again in front of another corpse? Okay, let's go home quickly and eat some noodles. I'll be leaving too. Take care, everyone. <coughs> The victim's head wound was post-mortem. Sebastian. And the candelabra dealt the fatal blow. Estimated time of death is late last night. What is it, Justine? While I do appreciate your enthusiasm, perhaps you should give your tongue a rest. You might pull a muscle. That would be painful indeed. Anyways... It's quite clear now. Kate Faraday must be arrested. What? It was a big idea, pal. It's just as he says, detective. The culprit is Miss Kate Faraday, and your proof is where? Ma'am, your proof. You fucking keep asking us for proof all the time. Where's your proof? Give me your fucking proof. The young lady in bandage is over there, although she's not wearing her usual attire. Are you not Miss Kate Faraday? What would you do if she is Kay? If you're going to arrest her. And I will resist by any means necessary. That, I guarantee you. I am now convinced the doubts surrounding your suitability as a prosecutor were indeed warranted. It's fine, Mr. Edgeworth. You can go. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. What are you saying, Kay? You can't just go along with them, pal. I don't remember anything. What if I really did kill that woman and then forgot about it? That's true. Acknowledgement is the goddess's mercy. Atonement is her will. The goddess of law will surely praise you for your prudence. Sebastian and Judge Courtney. If you believe she is the culprit, on what basis do you make your accusations? Thank you, Ed Edgeworth. Unless I'm completely convinced by your explanation. I will not obey your orders. Fine, have it your way. Now sit tight and listen to the perfect reasoning of the best. I am the best in the world. No one else can do what I do. Yes, that's why I was the first to realize that Kate Faraday is the culprit. She broke into the meeting room in order to steal something. In order, in other words, she is the only one who could have killed Mr. Kane, Crane. His logic's as awful as ever, sir. Harsh words, coming from you, detective. I ask for some basis to your claims, yet your reasoning has told me absolutely nothing. However, we have no evidence to prove she didn't do it either. Don't worry, Kay. I'm sure Miss Redworth will pull pull off a miracle. You think my deductions are some kind of miracle work? You'd better not disappoint me. Understand, Miles Edgeworth? Because if you do, this whip of mine won't stay silent. It certainly sounds like you are quite familiar with this room. The best man for the job should know all the best places. Unfortunately, it seems that you are not the best man for the job. Are you mocking me? That's for you to decide. You didn't even know about this keycard, did you? Of course I know about that. You needed to enter this room. Huh? Was it really needed? This foolish fool simply doesn't know when to give up! <laughs> Sebastian, do you really suspect Kay? Th th that's right! She is the only one who could have done it! Well then, allow me to ask you. Since this room can only be entered by using a keycard, 
How did she enter the room without one? <laughs> well, she probably used the snout and... <laughs> oh, did you pull a muscle? Allow me to explain then. The door could only be opened by members of the PIC. Which means... Yes, that is correct. Hmm? She conceded so easily. Take a look at this. It's a record of this room that I investigated just a while ago. At 12.52 a.m., the door was opened using Mr. Crane's... Mr. Miss Crane's key card. It's probable that the killer entered the room together with the victim, Miss Crane. After entering, the situation must have soared, soured, leading to the murder. The logic holds, but it is still merely conjecture, and it would imply that the killer and the victim were acquainted. Away, pal. Kate doesn't even know the victim. That is merely an assumption of, on your part, unless you have any evidence to prove your claim. Evidence is everything, in court and at the crime scene. Without it, your argument is invalid. In that case, I trust that you have evidence to prove that Kay Faraday and the victim were connected. Of course. What? This letter was discovered by Dr. Young in Miss Crane's breast pocket. The victim's belongings. Why did she withhold such vital evidence until now? Could it be? She was waiting for the perfect time to reveal it. Come to think of it. The candelabra dealt the fatal blow. Estimated time of death is late last night. What is it, Justine? Well, I do appreciate your enthusiasm. Perhaps you should give your tongue a rest. You might pull a muscle. Hmm, hmm. I'll read it for you. To Miss Crane, thank you so much for helping with my plan. I'm glad that we can help each other get what we want. It's like killing two birds with one stone. Please get revenge for 12 years ago. K. In other words, K. Faraday and Miss Crane were accomplices. They probably planned to steal something from this room. P Preposterous! Wait, that means... The main culprit is... It's still Carrie K. Faraday, of course. It just means her crimes have increased by yet one more. I'm... The main culprit? You don't believe her, Kay. It's all a bunch of nonsense. There's no way Kay would do something like that. Nonsense? Not at all. The evidence speaks for itself. Wouldn't you agree? Mm-hmm. <laughs> knew that they wouldn't suspect Kay unless they had some sort of proof, but to think they would actually have such decisive evidence. Nicely done, Justine. Thank you very much. Your explanation is still insufficient. I cannot accept such an argument. Sebastian, would you please leave this to me? Alright, make sure you shut Mr. Edgeworth up for once and for all. I can't allow their allegations to gain any more any more momentum. I must turn it around here. Hmm. The relationship between Kay Faraday and Miss Crane is as documented in the letter. She roped Miss Crane into assisting her with her plan. However, for some reason, their partnership broke down. Miss Crane was murdered, but with her dying breath, she managed to retaliate. Her parting gift is this letter, which she tucked safely away in her left breast pocket. Her testimony is even better than ever. Maybe the most perfect it's ever been, sir. Are you gonna be alright, Miss Redgeworth? Mm, yes, of course. How unsightly, Miles Edgeworth. Save your stoic act for some other time. It's from Karma. It's whose side are you on? I'm on nobody's side, Scruffy. When searching for the truth, it's best not to take sides. 
Watch what you say, Miss von Karma. Or else Mr. De Best is gonna... Best, you say? Well, I can tell you that the side I'm almost... Ah! How irritating. Well, I suppose that's one thing we can agree on. We love it. Seeing siblings agree. <laughs> Mm, where is the... Oh, wait. What was it? Uh, the victim's body was discovered in the PIC meeting room. The estimate time of death is sometime between late last night and midnight. The cause of death was a stab. Was stab wounds to the left chest, but the candelabra head wound was post-mortem. Burn mark on the victim's hand. If it wasn't in the left breast pocket, though, it would be speared by the candelabra. The victim held on to the truth until her dying breath. A truly touching story indeed. The voices of the dead are soft. One must listen carefully to hear their dying wishes. And Miss Crane has spoken. Kay Faraday is the culprit. Hmm. Perhaps the voices you have been hearing were actually the whispers of the devil. Hey, don't make fun of Justine. Let's listen to the voice of reason, Judge Courtney. Please, take a look at the autopsy report. There is no need. I remember it perfectly. The victim was stabbed in the left breast. No, it can't be. The letter was found in the victim's left breast pocket. And that's where the victim was stabbed with the candelabra, right, sir? Precisely. It wouldn't have been possible to stab her there without piercing the letter as well. Ha, gotcha, bitch. So that begs the question, why was the letter found in the victim's pocket? It's simple. It was placed there after the victim was murdered to throw suspicion onto Kay. Somebody intentionally wanted to create this very situation. Looks like she needs an updated autopsy report. <laughs> In other words, there exists the possibility that the letter was forged by the true culprit. No! Real murderer tried to pin the crime on Kay. And that is the only explanation for the letter. And in doing so, the murderer ended up digging their own grave, right, sir? The culprit is Kay Faraday. The letter was... Yeah, it was actually found in the victim's other pocket. Huh? What are you saying, pal? The officer's report was wrong when he said the letter was in her left pocket. It's actually in the... <laughs> a foolish fool who continues to make a fool of himself. Is there no cure for your foolishness? You keep whipping me and quit calling me a fool. <laughs> I saved you the trouble of punishing him yourself. I indeed. I had no intention of punishing him. The letter is stained with blood, no doubt because it was found in the left breast pocket. There couldn't have been an error in the officer's report. Unless you were the investigator. <laughs> Say something, Justine. Ah, finally she shuts up. Thank fuck. God, I'm so tired of her. I see you have no objections. Then allow me to continue. There is one more potential suspect in this case. Don't be ridiculous. The killer entered this very room. There wasn't anyone else who did that besides Kay Faraday and the victim. To enter the meeting room, one needs a key card. And their reasoning assumes that the murderer and the victim enter the room together. This is what we overlooked. If we just discard that assumption, then this evidence reveals the other suspect besides Kay. Take that. This is the keycard record Judge Courtney handed me earlier. The victim's keycard was used at 12.52 a.m. And there was one more person who also used the keycard. So you're saying this person was waiting to ambush the victim inside the meeting room? The keycard was used at 10.15 p.m., I wouldn't say it's impossible. No, it's impossible. What makes you say that, pal? You got any proof? Of course I do. I myself am that proof. I was the one who used that keycard after all. Is there something strange about... A PIC member entering the PIC meeting room? 
Listen, if this was like literally anyone else besides you, you would 100% fucking be on their asses. But some when someone turns it against you, you're like, no, absolutely not. I can testify for myself that I was the one who entered this room, but I, I am not the killer, obviously. <laughs> Hmm. It proves nothing. The fact that you were in here at all makes you a suspect. Or do you perhaps have any evidence that you didn't kill your colleague? Such nonsense. What would I gain by murdering her? Allow me to read, read, allow me to reiterate. I can say that word, reiterate, what you said earlier. I'm sure it will all become clear upon further investigation. Why would I, a faithful servant of the law, commit a crime? True enough, I entered this room. However, that alone is not reason enough to suspect me of a crime. Her double standards. Her fucking double standards. I fucking hate her so much. Oh my god. If that's the case, please tell me why you entered this room. I had some business to take care of, and some preparations had to be made. Preparations for murder? Preparations. That sounds pretty suspicious, pal. Unfortunately, I cannot disclose what these preparations were. However, I am sure you could hazard a guess, Prosecutor Edgeworth. So she was preparing for my hearing. She must have gathered all the necessary materials to take away my prosecutor's badge. Who this? Wonderful, wonderful. It's good to see your young people go head to head so ruthlessly. Who is that? Takes me back. When I was young, I always butt heads with this brash detective. And then one day, he just disappeared. I hope he's still doing well. Ah, here come the waterworks. Chairman the best. Did she just say the best? Hello, Courtney. You sure are full of energy today. And if it isn't little Von Karma, look how much you've grown since I last saw you. S sir, it has been quite a while. Curtsy. You don't have to treat me like some sort of stranger, you know? I remember back in the old days when you'd sit on my lap and call me Unky Boo Boo? Here I go again. Oh, how I cried back then. Pops, what are you doing here? Hmm? A member of the PIC was killed and I heard that you were in charge of the case. What kind of prosecutor is followed around by his own father? Hold your tongue. Do you have any idea who this man is? Chairman of the PIC, former chief prosecutor. He is the right hand of the goddess of law. Now, now, Courtney. Courtney, I'm just no chunk of coal. There's no reason to speak so highly of me. Please excuse my subordinate's behavior. I am. Prosecutor Regworth, isn't it? Along with his trusty sidekick, Dick Gumshoe. I am Blaze the best. I am the proud father of that idiot over there. When that boy was born, me and the missus were happy as can be, you see. And now, I don't even know where she's gone to. <laughs> Hobbs, you need a handkerchief? Ah, yes, Sebastian is an idiot, but he's such a good boy, you know. Quite the doting father and son. Now then, Courtney, how's the investigation going? Sir, we have established that the culprit is Kay Faraday. We are currently focusing our efforts. There are too many uncertainties in this case. It's impossible to determine that she is the culprit. Surely you haven't forgotten the matter of the letter. I already told you, it was just a simple mistake. The letter, the letter was in another pocket. You talk too much. Now. It's all plain nice, everyone. Just calm down. 
I'm sorry that you had to witness such an unsightly scene, Mr. Chairman. I want to apologize, Courtney. I can follow everyone's logic. Except Sebastian's, that is. Hey, Pops! Chairman the best. I am a prosecutor. My duty is to bring criminals to justice. However, I won't make someone out to be a criminal without sufficient motive and evidence. I don't even know if you can fucking hear my fucking doorbell when she is at there, but... I've only, only streamed for like an hour, and she's already been at my door twice. <laughs> hmm, I heard about you and your relationship with the suspect, you know? Ah, to share such a strong bond. Okay, it's assisting the police in arresting criminals countless times, pal. There are too many facets of this case that have remained unexplored. Third time. I see. The bonds of youth are a wonderful thing indeed. That is that, and this is this, you know? What's that supposed to mean? The prosecutor of the prosecutor's office needs to resolve this case as quickly as possible. I mean, just think of all the other cases that are piling up. There's no time to waste here. It's unfortunate, but... You understand, right, Edgeworth? What? Now then, Kay Faraday. I'd like to arrest you now. Okay. No! I won't let you! Kay's innocent, pal! To defy Chairman the Best is to defy the law. It would be a grave act of disloyalty, in other words. A hearing won't be needed. Are you prepared to lose your prosecutor's badge? Th that's... Mr. Edgeworth's badge? You can't do that! Using a prosecutor's badge as a shield? What has a PIC come to? Kay, you haven't done anything wrong. Mr. Edgeworth, it was only for a short time, but thank you for everything. I'm sorry, I turned out to be a criminal. We will make sure to impart your confession to the goddess of law. <laughs> what should I do? When I was young, I wanted to become a defense attorney, like my father. Someone who can fight to save those in need. And right now, this badge is holding me back. A mere badge for the life of a dear friend. I don't even have to consider it. All right. Farewell, Mr. Edgeworth. Hold it. Hold it right there, Judge Courtney. What is it now, Prosecutor Edgeworth? This is your prosecutor's badge. Prosecutor Edgeworth, what is the meaning of this? Consider this my resignation. I am no longer a prosecutor. Mr. Edgeworth! What are you doing? Explain yourself, Miles Edgeworth. You... you can't be serious. Mr. Edgeworth, you... you're joking, right? If you aren't a prosecutor, and I... My only mission is to bring the truth to light. If it is the pros is it, if it is, if it's the prosecutor's path to turn a blind eye to the truth, then that title is worth nothing to me. Things he did that, my God, I <laughs> will walk in the path that I believe in. I will not be stopped here. Objection! You. You're running away from Von Kalma, from me! No matter what you say, I don't intend to go back to my, on my decision. So, you're leaving me behind again? I'll never, never forgive you for this! No! This is all my fault! I'm sorry. If only I weren't here. Why does it feel like it's about to turn into a musical? Like, she's just about to break into a song. Like, am I the only one that feels that? Wait, Kay! Detective Gumshoe, don't follow me. B but, Mr. Edgeworth, boss. I'm not your boss anymore, detective. 
That's... That's just too much, sir. It's always been you and me. We've always been a team. Detective Gumshoe, you no longer need to follow my lead. You should try to accomplish whatever you can on your end. <laughs> ah, ah, this is bad. You just let a dangerous criminal escape. How could I let her get away? And after all my hard work, you see... Rest assured, Mr. Chairman, this area will be locked down immediately. Good. I expect the best from you, Courtney. <laughs> She's like, I only threatened to take this bitch away. I wasn't actually planning to, and this... He actually... He did that. <laughs> Oh my god. How long is this episode anyways? Six. Mm, depends. Okay. Mm. She's not here either. Where in the world could she have gone? Knock, knock, I'm here. Mr. Shields. What's going on, Miles? Why the long face? Take it for Uncle Ray. You won't be popular with the ladies looking like that. Why are you here? Did something happen? That's my line. Have you, have you seen the news about the murder at the PIC headquarters? You were hearing. Wasn't it there today? I found myself wondering if you guys had somehow got caught up in it. Wait, it's already made the news. I hear they're searching for a teenage girl suspected of killing an attorney. I can't imagine it could have been her, but it has been bothering me. Couldn't you give me the full rundown? The truth is... Miles, are you trying to give your Uncle Ray a heart attack? I'm not joking, she really did lose her memory. On top of that, she's a suspect. That makes things even more difficult. Where would she have run off to? She lost her memory, right? I was hoping she would return here, but... Not likely, she felt responsible for what happened to you, right? And there's no way she would come back here. I know that. Where else can I look? Calm down, Miles. This isn't like you. It's rare to see you get so heated up. Well, not that it's a bad thing. If you're trying this hard to save an innocent suspect from false charges... I'm sure you'd make a great defense attorney. Actually, just a while ago, I turned in my badge. But that doesn't mean I've decided to become a defense attorney. Besides, Kay isn't just a mere suspect. I may have only known her for a short time. We've been through quite a lot together. And I know she isn't capable of murder. I am surprised. I never thought you would go so far to support someone else. I don't know if you even realize it yourself, but... It seems a deep bond has already begun to grow between you and Kay. I'd say it even gives my bond with your father a run for its money. No, it's not that deep. He really said it's not that deep. <laughs> she just keeps barging into my state of affairs. <laughs> yeah, that girl can be quite a handful. I'm certain that something has changed inside you since you met her. I'm really jealous, you know. After all, I lost my old partner. That's why you need to find Kay right now. I don't want you to lose your bond like your Uncle Ray did. Well then, I have a proposal. We have no idea where she is, and searching around blindly won't get us anywhere. In that case, why don't we try searching for the cause of her memory loss? Maybe that could give us a lead. I see. That might be a good idea. From what you told me, something must have happened to her at the Grand Tower. Great, that's it. Let's get going then. Hey, at the very least, could you stop looking so grim? If you stay that way, Kay probably won't want to come back at all. Good grief. I'm no match for this man. It seems it's already dark. Still open on the day of murder. Of a murder. You gotta admire their capitalist spirit. There's no one here. 
Looks like we've got the place all to ourselves. To prove Kay's innocence, we need to investigate her lost memories. Hey, hey, let's go, Miles. We can investigate the roof as much as we want, so let's do what we can. Do what we can, huh? I suppose that's all we can do for now. Kay said she was standing under this tree, right? It's a cherry tree with branches spread wide. Flowers are nearly in full bloom. According to Kay's testimony, I... I... No, before she was pushed, she was standing on, under the cherry tree. Person in the red raincoat who pushed Kay off the tower. She said they came toward her from the direction of the stand. From that, we can deduce Kay was pushed over the railing on this side. Railing is about as high as my chest. It's unlikely that someone could fall from here accidentally. Hmm, I don't see any particular problems with this railing. Miles Edgeworth, so we meet again. What are you two doing here? Well, we came all this way, so I thought we'd buy some cotton candy. And what about you? You want folks to get the wrong idea about you? Do not worry, I will decide my own actions. You're just a no-good ex-prosecutor. It's no wonder you got the axe. Wait, what? You got fired? You needn't be concerned with what happens to me. Are you sure? Um, oh yeah! What happened to Kay? Huh? Was there some sort of trouble t between you two? Anything I can do to help? How about an injection? It's fine. Our injections are answer to everything. Alright, it's getting cold, isn't it? Let's go home. Well then, Miles, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, let's meet again soon. You, sir, how about some heavenly cotton candy, Heaven's Tear? Heaven's Tear? And they named them after the shape of the clouds you can see from here. You tear a regular piece of cotton and candy in half and then sell it without changing the price. That's why the name is Heaven's Tear. We tear the costs in half while crying tears of joy. If the customers knew that, they would be crying tears of sorrow. Towards the cherry tree. Oh, there we go. Ah. How? Kay. Um, um, don't mind me. I was just admiring the view beneath the tree. Did you just fall out of that tree? I didn't mean to fall. My foot slipped. You were suspect, and yet you remained at the crime scene. That's not a smart thing to do. Even if you have memory loss, shouldn't you have realized this much? This whole time, when you were playing this silly game of hide-and-seek, I have been worried sick about you. Are you angry with me? <laughs> he is actually a father now. <laughs> Of course I am. Answer me, what were you doing here? Do you think I'd let you off the hook that easily just because you have memory loss? Th that's not it! I came here because I thought I could get your badge back. What? If I don't regain my memories, I'll never get it back. I thought if I went back to where I lost my memories, then maybe I would remember. 
If I could just remember... killing her... <laughs> You're still the same as you were before you lost your memories. Your thoughts and actions have ex have always exceeded my expectations. Without a doubt, you are the K Faraday I know so well. However, I cannot approve your recklessness. I understand. Cut! You get zero style points, Miles. Or more like negative points. Here's how it's done. Okay, how about a hug? Uh, okay. Oh, well then. Mr. Shields! It was just a joke, honest. We interrupt this program with breaking news about the Grand Tower murder case. The police believe the culprit is a teenage girl who was present at the crime scene. She remains at large as the police continue to search for her whereabouts. Oh dear, this is getting pretty serious. Well gang, what's the plan? We don't have much time. Indeed, it's only a matter of time before they find us here. So then, why don't you tag along with us for a while, okay? But I'll just cause trouble for you again. It pains me to say this, but I've got nothing less left to lose at this point. Mr. Hedgeworth! That settles it. We're all in this together now. We're all in this! <laughs> Sorry. Miles, you're in charge of pro proving Kay's innocence. Failure's not an option. Yes, I understand. Kay, I want you to help Miles with this investigation as much as you can. Y yes I'll do my best. Let's be quick about it before the cops find us here. Unlike some people, Uncle Ray still has a lot to lose. Sheesh, if I lose the law office, I'll never be able to face Gregory. Man, I'm glad he's on our side. Yes? Can I help you with something? I came back here because I thought I might remember something. Could you again go over what, over what you told me before? Um, well... It was raining, so I stood under the cherry tree to take shelter. And then a red... A person in a red raincoat appeared. That person pushed me. I fell. Can you tell me anything about the person in the raincoat? I'm sorry, I don't remember that much. No, wait. As the person approached me, I saw the moon just over their shoulder. The moon? Yes, that's right. It's just a faint memory, but... I think the moon was in the exact same spot as it is now. He was floating just above the cherry tree. She could see the moon behind the figure in the raincoat. This is a new piece of testimony. I'll be sure to keep it in mind. Mr. Edgeworth, for a while now, I feel like I'm on the red verge of remembering something. What? Is that true? Well then, please speak freely. Say whatever comes to, to your mind. Um, okay, I remember a faint scent. It was a wonderful smell coming from the counter of a food stall. I followed the fragrance only to find a perfectly sculpted burger, resting on two golden buns. The tender and juicy patty made my taste buds sing with joy. Yes, I can remember what I thought at the moment. One second! I, I don't think this memory has anything to do with the case. Nope, wrong button. Why do you start from the top? You called yourself the great thief Yatagarasu. You prided yourself on being a noble thief who steals the truth. Do you remember anything about that? Well... Um, aha! Maybe I was called a noble thief because I won the noble prize! That's Nobel, not noble. And they don't give prizes for thievery.
need to no not where cube was standing the railing I recall case testimony a person in a raincoat approached her from behind the chair the candy stand then this person supposedly pushed Kay over the railing opposing the stand moreover Kay said she saw the moon over the person's shoulder. However, earlier I confirmed that the moon is floating in the opposite direction. And on the night Kay lost her memories, it seems the moon was in the exact same spot. Therefore, the positions of the moon and the person in the raincoat don't match up. Her memories have probably become confused. After all, had she actually been pushed over the railing, she couldn't have survived the fall. Perhaps I sh should question Kay's memory of where she fell. Where was Kay standing and where Kay fell? Kay was not pushed over the railing on this side. After all, if you fell from here, you wouldn't even be alive in the first place. But I am certain I was standing under the cherry tree. If I fell, then the only place I could have fallen was over the railing. Maybe the ground just opened up from under you and swallowed you up. The ground here can open up? How? No, no, it was just a joke, eh? I don't take it so seriously. No, strange as it may sound, that may actually be the truth. Even if it's only a small chance, it matters not. Let's try searching the area around the tree. He could not have fallen over the railing. There must be something around here that proves it. I wonder what it could be. This is... Looks like a maintenance hatch. Hey, maybe you fell down here? Yeah, just kidding. There's no way something like that could have... That could happen. I'm sorry, I just can't remember it. Oh, well, that was just a joke. I don't need to take it seriously. Right, so when should I take you seriously then? When indeed. Well, if you jumped into Uncle Ray's arms, it's her shields! <laughs> Come on, Miles. It was just a joke. A joke, you know. Sir? Sir? She is 17 and uh, you are 36. <laughs> That's not fucking this. Well, I get it. No one ever takes you seriously. Ouch. That sung a bit. Flower petals are scattered all over the ground. The blossoms are not yet in full bloom, so the strong winds up here must be the culprit. Personally, I'd appreciate it if they spent a little more effort cleaning these petals up. Are they not pretty enough for you, huh? Okay, where? Hold on, wait. How and where do I get that? Hold on. Oh, that's right. Here, we're seeing live footage from the 50th floor. The investigation will continue through the night. 50th floor? Isn't that the meeting room of the PIC headquarters? That's right, we can see the shadows of the investigators behind those blinds. Uh-oh, looks like making a clean getaway just got that much harder. It seems we have no choice but to cleverly evade the eyes of the media. 
Maybe Uncle Ray should have become a spy instead of an attorney. If worse comes to worst, I may have to use Mr. Shields as a decoy. Miles, just now, you were thinking of something terrible, weren't you? Contradiction is found here. You know how many floors this building has? Of course, 50 floors, right? That's above the place where the PIC conducts their practically illegal cover-ups. Couples are wishing for love. Kinda ironic, don't you think? So what's this dark area above the 50th floor? Maybe it's a tunnel of love. Those are always dark, yeah? The viewing platform we're on now should be directly above the PIC meeting room. However, the late night investigation is taking place two floors below us. This is a clear contradiction. Is there a mistake in the pamphlet? Oh no, rather. It's more natural to assume this building has a hidden 51st floor. I see! So that's where the Tunnel of Love is. Ah, she's so pure and gullible. It's breaking Uncle Ray's heart. And why don't you take this opportunity to be more serious for once? You just don't get it, Miles. I joke around to make things easier for you. On the contrary, his painful jokes only make things harder for me. There we go, fell on a hatch in Easter floor 51. Yeah, it's, uh, now, we're, now we're talking. An extra floor between the 50th floor and the viewing platform. Why didn't anyone notice it? Normally, you'd notice it. I mean, how can you hide an entire floor? That is where the problem lies. No one noticed something that should have been easily noticed, noticeable. In other words, it must be impossible to access the 51st floor through normal means. I see! Maybe there's a secret portal or something. Okay, now's not the time to be thinking with portals. Ah! Ah! Ha ha! Portal reference. We love to see it. We love to see it. I'd like you to recall the hatch at the base of the cherry tree. Isn't it normal to assume there's a room on the other side of the maintenance hatch? <laughs> Uncle Ray likes where you're going with this. Let's hurry and check it out. There, we go. Now let's see. This is... Looks like there's a lot of stuff down there. Is this what they call a storeroom? There's no doubt about it. This is where Kay fell down. And of course. And with this, the mystery is solved. No, not yet. We still have the mystery of the person in the red hood who was walking in midair. Now, now, let's not get greedy, shall we? We found the storeroom, so let's wrap the things up here. I suppose you have a point. Hmm, it does seem to warrant an, in an investigation. Well, if it isn't Miles Edgeworth, who's this? Emma! What are you doing here? I heard about the case from Detec Detective Gumshoe. Since I was already in the area, I thought I might as well check out the crime scene. This girl's name is Emma Skye. She is a high school student studying in Europe to become a forensic scientist. She's the younger sister of my former boss and a witness in one of my trials two years ago. Detective Gumshoe told me everything over the phone. He sounded really upset. He said you lost your badge at the, at the Grand Tower and Kay became a mummy. P please, calm down. I thought you left for Europe just a few days ago. Don't tell me you've come back already. Yep, and I brought my teacher from abroad too. He needed an interpreter, so I volunteered to help. Your teacher cannot speak English. Why aren't you with him right now? He can still communicate with people. Don't underestimate the importance of body language. It doesn't really count as a language. But enough about that. What happened to Kay? Is she alright? My my, what a good friend. Isn't this great, Kay? Y yeah. Um, who are you? Are you Mr. Edgeworth's new assistant? <laughs> On the contrary, my dear. I'm Ray Shields, head of the Edgeworth Law Offices. 
It's worth law offices. Wait, you mean like defense attorneys? Mr. Regworth, when did you suddenly become an attorney? N no, it's not like that. Now that I think about it, it is rather complicated working. It is a rather complicated working relationship. Let's about the details. Let's get, let's start with an introductory hug. How did you become a defense attorney, Mr. Regworth? Hey, I won't just ignore me. Because I don't approve at all. Uh, hmm. Well, why don't we continue this conversation down below? Sprite, the police could arrive any second now. Mr. Edgeworth, who's she? I'll explain later. First, we have to go down the hatch. Huh, okay. Guess I'll be joining the prosecu- uh, defense team? I'll explain about that too. Well then, let's go to this. Let's go, go, go to the storeroom. Sweet, are we halfway already? Are you kidding me? We're not even two hours in, and I'm already halfway. What is this joke? What is this fucking joke? What is happening? Why was that one case so fucking long? <laughs> Why did it take me fucking? Oh my god. <laughs> uh. Well, yeah. I dropped my controller on the floor. It's fine. <laughs> Somehow. Huh. Okay, this might this might take a while. Oh well. I'm fine with it. It's pretty dark down here. I can't see a thing. What's your footing, Emma? Ouch, I think I hit my head. Okay, be careful not to slip. Take your time coming down. Huh, okay. Hmm, the light switch should be somewhere around here. Th the sis! Hidden 51st floor. Is it being used as a storeroom? We'll need to investigate it thoroughly. Mr. Edgeworth, please tell me about the case. Right then, where should I begin? I see. This is certainly a serious situation. Why does she look like she's having so much fun? <laughs> Looks like you're in a bind, prosecutorial attorney, Edgeworth. I'm not a defense attorney, nor is there such a thing as a prosecutorial attorney. This looks like a job for science. Don't you worry, I've got everything here in my bag. Are you sure you're up for this, Emma? Of course! So, once again, it's good to be working with you, Mr. Edgeworth. And I'm glad to be working with you as well. Looks like we got ourselves another cute assistant. So, what's the plan? That lift looks pretty suspicious to me. It looks like it goes down. I'm curious as well. But first, we should investigate this room. Okay, if you find out anything, be sure to tell Uncle Ray. And if I remember something, I'll let you know. Yes, please do. Emma. Roger, I'm ready to support. Well then. Let's begin the investigation. Have you you have you played the first investigations game? Because if you have, you might recognize some things here. Not all the way. These are. What is it? The items displayed on the shelf here. If I recall correctly. They were all evidence from past cases that I was involved in. Involved with. What are they doing here? Hmm, I guess that would make this place the PIC's evidence storeroom, huh? Hmm. 
These items should be kept in the care of the police. They keep evidence in the pr prosecutor's office? Only for current trials. However, once a verdict has been reached, the evidence is transferred over to the police department. Real quick. No worries, take your time. And stored in the evidence room. And it looks like the evidence has been stored here instead. There's no point in worrying about it. For now, you should try examining everything. It looks like some of the evidence have tags in front of them. And there are numbers written on the tags. Maybe they're the ID numbers of the evidence. No. Based on how large these numbers are, and the nature of these items, I'd say... These are prices. Prices? If that's the case... How? These are ridiculously expensive. She seems more concerned with the high prices than the legality of this whole affair. The evidence on display. I shouldn't inspect every nook and cranny. That's strange. Only this one spot is empty. But it still has a price tag. Just like all the others. Indeed. Furthermore, there is a part of this cloth that is not covered in dust. Perhaps something was placed here not too, not so long ago. I see. It sure seems like it. Hmm, but... What could it have been? A star-shaped mark on, in the dust. I wonder... Could it be related to a certain piece of evidence? This is a rare shape for a pedestal. If the spot where it was put on still has this mark. You're on case three. Case three is uh... Oh that's the yeah the kidnap turnabout. Yeah that's what I thought. <laughs> I just had to like go through like the cases in my head, and I was like, the second is the airplane one. Oh, it's the, it's the it's the kidnapping then. I see. And it will be, be then it will become apparent where whether or not it had been placed there. So that has a star shape, and this has a star shape. That is strange. I wonder if they're connected somehow. It's dust pattern. Case 3 of Apollo. That is... It's not... It's not Serenade. Is it? It might be. You're just playing like all the games at the same time. <laughs> I could never. No, I believe I believe it is Serenade. Let me also check. You're not, but you're playing the investigations game, and didn't you just say that you played? Um, Trials and Tribulations. You're, you're playing like at least three games at the same time. <laughs> yeah, Serenade. That's the that's the that's the third one. I knew it. I knew it. It's, it's kind of short, actually, that game. The last case, though, fucked me up. I mean, the entire game fucking fucked me up. No spoilers, though. You know, because I'm gonna play that after this. Oh, <laughs> years ago. Okay, but like I can I can relate though, because I actually Nightbot, please. <laughs> I have to I have to fix Nightbot. Wait, I have Nightbot up actually. Can I? Is that really it? Hold on, let me. Uh... Check this spam protection here. 
Okay, it should be good to go. No, wait, yes, now it should be good to go. I turned it off. And also emotes can in turn. There we go. Now it should be good. Sorry about that. I am still rather new to this whole streaming thing, so... Uh, I started uh, playing Ace Attorney back in 2016. And uh, I had finished... I think I spent like a few months on like the... The trilogy or something because I got... I remember I got Apollo Justice in December because my nephews were born. <laughs> That's how I remember it. And... I don't remember if I, like, uh, ordered it or if I already had it then. I just remember something about Apollo Justice. So whether I had it or I was ordering it already. Uh, either way, that's about, like, when I got Apollo Justice. So I, I think I brought it with me, so I probably played it. Anyways, and I was, like, crying my eyes out in the fucking first case. <laughs> My god, it fucked me up. This dust pattern measures up perfectly with the base of the candelabra. It's likely that the killer got the candelabra from this very store. But yeah, after that, I uh, started the 3DS games. And I finished those rather quickly too. The only, literally, the only Ace Attorney games I have not played by now uh, are the Daigyakuten and Saibang ones, both of them, and also the Professor Layton crossover. Those are the only ones I haven't played yet. But apparently there was like some kind of like leak, whether that is actually like... Um, trustworthy or not uh, remains to be seen I guess but apparently they're planning to uh, they, they may be planning to announce uh, the Daigyakuten Saiban uh, release overseas release uh, in next summer I believe Yeah. So, I guess we'll just have to see. It seems like the biggest problem about that is fucking... Is the fact that there is a, a character named Sherlock Holmes. We, we talked about this in like another stream. It's like, it's, it's this whole thing. Next month, interesting. I read it was gonna be, like, announced in, like, June 2022 or something. Huh. Does that mean the candelabra was also a piece of evidence? It's quite possible. However, that is not the- that is not the issue here. The murder weapon originally came from the storeroom. We must keep that in mind. How cute! This stuffed animal is so fluffy. That's from Gord Lake. Uh, maybe. I also read a bit about that. And, uh... They don't plan to be releasing this, uh... At least not like as a physical release or whatever, but like as a digital download, maybe. Because they were just like not... 
it wouldn't it wouldn't be worth it apparently, which is kind of sad, but you know, it'd be like that, I guess. It should be in the care of the prosecutor assigned to that case right now. Why is it sitting here in a place like this? Huh? This little guy is missing his left horn. Hmm, his left horn. I'm pretty sure it was already missing it when I first saw it. Then this must be a defective product. I demand a recall. Now that I think about it, giving a broken toy to a country's president does sound strange. Oh my god. This storeroom contains items to be sold, doesn't it? It's unfortunate, but the possibility seems quite high. I suspect some nefarious individual has been selling evidence here. Oh yeah, for sure. I would, I would, I would, I would buy them all in a, in a fucking heartbeat. Like, I, I bought the, uh, trilogy, like, twice, because I have it on, I have it on my 3DS, and I also have it on my Switch. I also have the DS cartridge of Apollo Justice, and then like after I finished that, of course they fucking announced that it was gonna be released on 3DS, and I was like, well fuck me, I guess I gotta download that too. <laughs> so <laughs> I have like paid for like some of the games twice, but I'm not complaining. I would pay for them again. <laughs> People actually pay money for this stuff? Apparently, some people do. And price tags are proof. Different strokes for different folks, I guess. Mm. I never... Like, ever since I got believe like a DSi I I haven't really liked getting like the actual games because the cart like the the cassettes or whatever they just like take up like way too much space so I'm just like meh just get like a, a, a kind of big um, what's it called SD card put it in your in my in my 3ds and just download the ones that I need you know Damn, I believe you. Hmm, okay. Let's see here. Do I need to examine anything else there? Crisis logic, stuffed animal. Examine episode, share spot, the juice, and the cambalabra. Okay, I need to... Oh my god. I got Apollo Justice from China. <laughs> For like... It was rather cheap though. I'm... I'm still not sure if it was like actually like an actual copy. I don't believe so because I didn't... I just got the game. I just got like the game cartridge. I didn't get like anything else with it. So, but it worked. I mean, apparently DS games are kind of like buggy on uh, a 3DS for, for whatever reason. I don't know why. But I got like to like the, the last episode and um, there was this part that just kept glitching out all the time and I had to like restart over and over again and I was just like oh my god I've done this like three times <laughs> and then I switched to my uh, DS is it I guess it's my DSi or it's my DS Lite I'm not sure and it worked perfectly fine but like the reason why I say that I, I don't like think that my Apollo Justice one was like um, 
real? Or, well, it was real, but like... Yeah, you should, you should just play uh, DS games on actual DS con consoles, not 3DS. I tried, I tried with my uh, copy of uh, Animal Crossing Wild World 2 and it just like wouldn't, it would barely even start. But once I like plug it into my DS Lite, it would like, oh, okay, sure, I'll work, I'll work for you. You want me to do, you want, you want me to start? Sure, I'll do that. So it just doesn't work on 3DS for some reason. Um, but what was I saying? Yeah, there was this like thing in Turnabout Serenade uh, where like suddenly the screen, there was like almost a face like in the text box. And I was like, this can't be, this, this can't be right. I believe I still have like a picture of it somewhere. Hold on. If I can find it, I'm gonna... I don't even know if I will be able to like show it. And I'm gonna try anyways. Okay, yeah, so I I, I definitely ordered it. I ordered Apollo Justice. The day when my uh, nephews got born. <laughs> Let me see here. I remember there was like a strange like... There it is! I found it! I found it! What the hell is that? What the hell is that? It's so fucking weird. Hold on, let me... See if I can, uh... Pull it up my screen. This was like... I don't even... Even know if like you will be able to like see it or whatever. But like... This thing... This was just like at the bottom of like a text box for some for whatever reason. It was just like right there. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it came from, but it scared me. It looks like it's like a man. It's like a little stick figure. <laughs> and I was like, the fuck is this? So I'm wondering if I will be able to like spot it. Once I start Apollo Justice again, see if it's like the thing. I don't remember seeing it. I I just finished Turnabout Serenade. Uh, in my own time. Anyways, whatever. Let's get back to the game. <laughs> I've spent way too much time just talking. Uh, over here. There's a huge stack of money piled up here. How unrefined. They're all $100 bills! Talk about big bucks! So, how many times your yearly salary do you think this is worth? Leave my salary out of this. Oh, we have the blue badger back in there. We have this monkey from the Turnabout Samurai from the first game. We have the... Uh, red uh, something or other. A statue. Yes! Is it a... Is this some sort of new fact? No, this is evidence from a case that I was previously involved in. I believe it was called the Alice Red. Well, wasn't it Aleph? Aleph Red? Statue? There were supposed to be two of them, one real and one fake, but... No matter which one this is, it's unnatural for it to turn up in a place like this. That's the real one! Mr. Redworth, you've really seen a lot of cases, huh? Gotcha! 
Yippee ki yay! I got me a scoop. Ah. Ugh, my eyes! Stop it! You ain't getting any. You ain't, you ain't getting away from the Great Lotus camera that easy. I reckon y'all must be criminals. I'ma snap sixteen shots before y'all can even say cheese. We're not criminals. Really? You ain't fooling my camera of justice with those words. Hmm. You are. Huh? You're. Ain't you that heinous prosecutor from back then? Who are you calling heinous? This is Lotta Hart. She's a photographer I've dealt with during my past cases. I see her distinctive accent and her chattering mouth haven't changed a bit. Let's look at that face. You're obviously up to no good. Seems she has a bad com impression of us. Now it's time to pay your dues. Stand still while I, photo while I photograph y'all. And we only came here to investigate. Lies. I think... You think you can fool me like that? Mr. Edgeworth, she's not listening at all. She seems harmless. Let's just leave her be for now. Don't you think it's kind of creepy how all these masks are lined up in such a dark place? Hmm. Emma, are you not good with horror movies? <laughs> no way! Horror movies are so unscientific. So she's scared of them. Various masks are placed here. No worries. Thank you for... for for just staying here with me for a while. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry about just going off on like random like ramblings and stuff. <laughs> Objection! Oh, thank you so much for the follow. I hope you have a great day and a, a great day at work. And I hope to see you again next time. Various masks are placed here. There's even one of the steel samurai. Indeed, these are fairly high quality replicas. Scientifically speaking, it's just a bunch of random masks. It certainly does look like a hodgepodge of hodgepodge collection of masks. Hmm, this hook is. It looks like a hook to hang um hang a mask from. I wonder what mask used to be here. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Pajama ninja mask. Pajama ninja mask that Kay had with her. Perhaps it was originally attached to this hook. That sounds plausible, scientifically speaking. In other words, Kay came here. It's quite likely. For what purpose? Maybe she was going to steal something from this place. A great thief who steals the truth, huh? No, I don't think we can answer that question at this time. So, what are y'all folks doing in a suspicious place like this? I was about to ask you the very same question. Why are you here? For the people of the world, and for myself. I'm a social justice photographer after all. So I gotta take photo after photo after photo for my big scoop. Seems I won't be able to talk to her normally when she's like this. Yes? Can I help with something? No, apparently not. I'm missing something. Oh, I need to logic. Prices and big bucks, there we go. From the price tags attached to the pieces of evidence and that huge stack of cash, it's clear that the buying and selling of evidence was being carried out here. And hidden th 55 55 55 <laughs> Lily are you okay? 51st floor evidence was being trafficked 
This clearly means something. It seems further investigation is needed. About the dealings that went on in the, that went on in this place. I don't think there was a witness. We could just ask them. A witness. A lot of... Earlier, you said that this was evidence from a case that you were involved with. At any rate, you've got to admit that this is a very strange statue. It's the Alice Red statue. Aleph, but yeah. Huh? This is the Aleph Red statue. And it doesn't look all red to me. Wait, the name is written here. Aleph Red statue. Okay, it was Aleph. Cool. Aleph Red. All is red. All is red. Aleph Red. Hmm? What are you mumbling to yourself about over there? <laughs> no! It's nothing. Come on, let's examine some other places. So, why did you come here? The people of the world for myself again okay, already did this. Oh, never mind. Actually, not. Nah. Y'all know that much already? Well, I reckon there ain't no reason to hide it anymore. My sources tell me there's some kind of black market act auction being held around these parts. What did you say? So then, all this evidence here is. Yup. There are goods for the auction. There's got a. There's a lot of dirty money flying around here. I wanted to try and catch it with my own two eyes. My source gave me a whole bunch of info, but. I figured just hearing about. Hearing about it ain't enough. Dean is believing after all. So I've been stalking out the place from behind this here statue since yesterday. The auction took place late last night and went on till the early morning. A murder on the night of the black market auction. Could the two events be related? Black market dealings in the Grand Tower. I guess I really hit the mother load this time. Were all the items in the au auction pieces of evidence? Oh, were the, all, the ev all the items in the auction pieces of evidence? There was some normal stuff too, like the stolen art and the like. I wouldn't consider stolen art to be normal. But I reckon the evidence was the star of the show here. These folks are law fanatics, trying, their, trying to get their hands on the latest goods from the police. So that's where you wanted to get pictures of his heart. Pretty much. They were meeting right under this very storeroom, so I watched them from up here. You said you were here since yesterday. Did you witness the, the entire event? It was a black market auction, after all. It followed a fairly de detailed procedure. First, the participants entered the storeroom from the viewing platform one at a time. When they got in, they each took one of those masks on the wall over there. Funny thing about those masks. They're all equipped with voice changers, itty bitty ones. No way they wouldn't be recognized. They wanted to protect their... An enemy? Or their... Anonin... Anon... An... Anemone? <laughs> That's it. You mean... You mean their... Anemone... Anonin... Anonin... Anonymity. Yeah, that's it. There. And I'm in them today. Yes. Why not just say identity and make things easier for all of us? After putting on the masks, they'd go down the lifts. On the way back, it was the exact same thing, but in reverse. They come up one by one, return the mask. And head up out of uh, out of the storeroom. Wow, that's pretty thorough. Hmm, how many participants were there? Eleven people all together. I counted each each of them as they made their way down. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -da. I'll have you know, I wasn't just laid up behind the statue the entire time. And where were you in the beginning? The beginning? 
Well, don't you worry yourself about that, you hear? So she was hiding behind the statue the entire time. I watched the folks coming in while lurking in the shadows. All secret agent-like. Note to self, secret agents like to lurk in the shadows. And then, they used that lift over there to get down to that auction site. After they all went down, I watched the whole thing from the lift. That lift stayed down the entire time. Nah, it came back up, but there's a tiny gap in the floor there. There's a bit of space between the floor and the lift platform, you see. So I could see just about everything that was going on down there. Then, did you see the person who was conducting the, the auction? Eh? Well, yeah, you betcha I did. What kind of story would this be if I didn't know who the conductor was? The conductor, huh? It seems I'll need to ask her for more details. Do you have any more information about this so-called conductor? You know, I came here to get me a scoop. What makes you think I give up my info to, to you all willy-nilly? Basically, what you're saying is you don't know. I see. So that's why she won't answer. Can I say? I couldn't even tell how old they were, or if they were a guy or girl. Guy or gal. Can you tell me what the person was wearing at the time? They had on a white jacket with a purple flower, and they were wearing white gloves. But you know, I don't mean much when I don't when I have no earthly clue on who they who they really are. So the conductor's identity was hidden, just like the participants. That's right. They had on a mask and voice changer just like everyone else. What kind of mask did this person wear? It was... Zervan mask, I reckon? Z Zervan? What in blazes is that supposed to be? Mr. Edgeworth, you don't know about Zervan? He's a sworn enemy of global hero Onyankopum. Zervan. Well then, Zervan. Zer- Zer- Whatever, Zervan. The ruler of time. Seriously, who hasn't heard of him? Most people, I'd imagine. Since the conductor wore a mask, I assume you were not able to see their face. Not even a teeny weeny bit. After I came all this way for my big scoop. This whole story is turning out to be nothing but fool's gold. That set of clothes seem familiar. Perhaps I should show her that piece of evidence. Here, Lada, do you want to see a body? You said the conductor wore a white jacket with a purple flower and a white and white gloves. That's right. He sure looks spiffy for a criminal mastermind. Miss Hart, did they look anything like this? Hey, that's it. That's the conductor. Hold your horses. Are you telling me the conductor is dead? She is the victim of a case we are investigating. Her name is Jill Crane. Have you heard of her? Can't say I have. So she was a lady, huh? What kind of gal dresses like that? She get her kicks by fooling me into thinking she's a guy? I doubt that her intention was to deceive you. Setting that aside, we have established something of major importance. The victim was the conductor of the black market auction. I see. So the conductor was killed, and that might explain... Explain what, Miss Hart? Ah, no, 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 it's nothing, honest. Miss Hart, you clearly sounded suspicious just now. And I'm telling you, I ain't. Hmm, can't be. Sorry, are you trying to say something? No, I ain't. I ain't, f I ain't said nothing. Please don't be like that. Just tell us. How many times do I gotta tell y'all? I'm a journalist. Information is what pays the bills. I can't just go around spouting everything I know. I've already said too much. I got nothing left to say to y'all. But then... What if I found some fingerprints for you? What good would that do me? I don't want none of your dusty old prints. Why don't you two follow my example and do some investigating on your own? Oh, I guess she won't tell us anything. To worry, Emma. Just leave it to me. I have a certain method of drawing out information from those who wish to hide it. If my opponent's lips are sealed, I will be the one to unseal them. Let us begin. First, let's analyze my opponent's demeanor. I ain't telling you nothing, so quit wasting my time. She seems rather impatient, as if she's trying to cut off the conversation. 
I must be careful with my time. I won't have long to consider my responses. I'm almost certain that she's hiding something from me. That's where I'll begin my attack. Now, time for the first move. You think you're overreacting a bit. Let's just calm down and- I'm always calm! Now leave me alone! A real journalist always keeps her cool. Speaking of journalists, I have something interesting to tell you. A few days ago, I met another self-proclaimed journalist. She spoke with an accent quite similar to your own. She, she spoke like me? Th then maybe it was. Nicole Swift. She had a distinct way of speaking, one very much like your own. Furthermore, she said that she had a mentor. Could she have been referring to you? Oh, so you know Nicole. Well, ain't that a fun little coincidence. Where'd y'all meet? Wait. No, no, stop trying to get me to spill the beans. Huh, <sighs> that was a close call. It seems that she lets down her guard when she talks about Miss Swift. This could be a useful clue. Lara and Nicole? Question mark. <laughs> I want you to tell me everything that you know, right now. No way, Jose! I ain't spilling my guts to someone I have no connection with. Perhaps I should use that clue. You say I have no connection with you, Miss Hart. But don't we have a mutual acquaintance with your apprentice? Also, that other man that you know, that the guy with the, with the blue suit and like the spiky hair. Yeah, that guy. He is also a, a, a mutual acquaintance of ours. Well, that's... I reckon it would be mighty cruel of me. To give Nicole's friends the old, the cold shoulder. And why don't you share with us what you know? Well, when you put it like that... I guess I could let you in on my scoop. No! I ain't falling for your nasty tricks, no siree! Your scoop? No, just forget it. I ain't... It ain't nothing important. Such a slip of the tongue. It's hardly becoming of a journalist. It's hardly becoming of a journalist. There we go. You have a scoop, don't you? Now tell us what it is. Uh, Alright, you got me. I had the perfect scoop. I have me the perfect scoop, but I ain't telling you what it is. I'm gonna sell a story to a publisher. The information she is hiding could be vital to the investigation. I need to make her talk. Next, I will press her on the contests, contents of her scoop. She may be quick to lose her temper, but she's even quicker to loosen her tongue. She is not a difficult opponent, not to extract the information I need. Does your story pertain to an incident of some kind? Well, maybe it does, and maybe it doesn't. That's hardly a clear answer. Why are you always hollering at me? I ain't done nothing wrong. I just snuck in to do some investigative reporting. You didn't do anything wrong. That's a bold statement. Considering you're currently trespassing on pri private property. Hey! You're doing it too! Well, I guess a prosecutor's got the right to investigate. Wherever they please. I probably shouldn't mention anything about the current state of my employment. There are far worse people in the world, you know. Um, I reckon I'm a saint. Compared to Fox who murder. Considering what you just mumbled. Is it possible your scoop has something to do with a murder incident? Hey! 
I was only talking in general terms, you know? I mean, anyone looked like a bag of roses compared to a murderer, right? Sounds like you were just making excuses to me. All I did was gather info on the black market at auction. A murder incident? I don't know anything about that. I ain't seen or heard nothing. I don't have enough clues. Damn it. Yeah, line of attack. I get it. Is it related to the black market? That's it. Does this scoop of yours have something to do with the black market auction? What are you talking about? I don't know anything about- I don't know nothing about that. Why are you in the middle of infiltrating the black market auction? The only logical conclusion is, is, your story has something to do with it. You ain't getting any answers from me. I- I didn't hear nothing. You didn't hear? What exactly? Did you hear something during the auction? Um, no, that's... I just heard a weird sound, is all. Even, it ain't even worth mentioning in my article. Just forget about it. There's no question. Something happened during the black market. Auction, she heard a strange sound. This could be a useful clue. Okay, here we go. Trespassing, there we go. Didn't you say you heard something strange during the auction? If it stuck out to you so much, it must not have been a sound that you would normally hear. For example, the screams of a murder vict victim. Uh, how'd you keep figuring everything out so quick? Th that's right. I stumbled upon a murder in the middle of my stakeout. Please, don't make me say any more. This is the biggest scoop I've had in a while. The murder that you overheard. It's most likely the same incident we are currently investigating. This is bound to be, the, be crucial information. I'll finish this by confirming the credibility of her information. She has nowhere left to run. It's time to deal the final blow. Um, tell, me, tell me what you know about the murder incident in full detail. Well, my memory ain't what it used to be. Not much I can talk about. I ain't the most attentive gal in the world, you see? I don't have enough clues. Okay, cool. Did you really stumble upon a murder? You are calling me a liar? I'm spiting words. I'm a bona fide journalist. I would never publish lies in my articles. Faster and more accurate than anyone. That's my motto. Her motto, huh? This could be a useful clue. I should keep it in mind. Tell me what you know about the incident. I'd hardly expect a bona fide journalist to be so inattentive. Didn't you say your motto is to be faster and more accurate than anyone? Well, that's... As I expected, the credibility of your information is suspect. B -b -b but I know what I heard. I even got proof. You have proof? How is that possible? Explain yourself at once. I got me some evidence. Uh, wait, you heard what? You heard that? Well, I was just talking to myself. Y'all just go on and pay no mind. Seems you're still hiding something. This is an important clue. Yes. Are oh, you still hiding something? Oh my god. <laughs> Tell me the truth. I know you're still hiding something from me. I ain't hiding nothing from nobody. I already done told you everything I know. So she used a clue. There we go. Isn't there something you haven't told me yet? You have evidence regarding regarding the incident you witnessed. Something definitive enough to publish in, in an article. Ah! What in tarnation? 
let me off the hook already. Fine, I'll tell you everything. I'll even show you the photo I took if, if you stop harassing me. That good enough for you? Checkmates. Oh my god, is there was more? I lost. I really lost. The mouth of the south has been defeated. Now then, it's time to come clean. Tell me everything that you know. I was watching the auction, gathering info for my story. You didn't just watch though, you got shocking photos too, right? Uh, a little while after the auction started, someone won a bid and the conductor banged a gavel. Someone hollered, we'll finish the deal upstairs. Stairs, or something like that. I ain't good, I thought to myself as I hurried back to hide behind the statue. Did you see whoever came up? Not quite, but I reckon the, the feller that came up was the winner of the bid. I could smell the buttery aroma of, a, of big fat watts of cash. The buttery aroma? I can't imagine that at all. I reckon this room is where the bidders ponied up the dough for their purchases. The two of them talked for a while. Wait, it was the second person in the storeroom. You betcha, I reckon it was a conductor. And then out of nowhere, one of them started screaming. I almost scared my britches off. I rolled, I rolled myself up into a ball and kept on laying low. So you witnessed the murder? Well, I wouldn't say that I witnessed it, but I definitely heard it though. Didn't you try to stop them? Just stop right there. I ain't even- that ain't even funny. What's a dainty little thing like me gonna do? Dainty. After that, I heard me some rustling and bustling. The whole lo the whole time, I was really regretting coming here. Something fierce. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I mean... But nothing gets in the way of Lotta Hart and her photos. This was my big scoop. Ain't no way I was gonna let it slip that easy. Sleepy, sleep away, apparently. I can't read. A bit later, I got this... I hear, I hear this loud thud. I figured it was my last chance to snap a photo from behind the statue. Well then, would you please show us the photo? Ah, why do I have to? This is... The person in the red raincoat who attacked... Oh. <laughs> the person in the red raincoat who attacked Kay! The person in the red raincoat assaulted the victim in the storeroom. And then attacked Kay on the roof. There's only one person in this photo. Where's the victim? Yeah, I thought it was strange too. I could have sworn there were two of them, but... When I looked, there was only the one. And that's gotta be the killer, don't you reckon? So she's saying the victim disappeared. You were able to get this person. To tell this person was the culprit just by looking. Her hand was stained bright red, so I figured it was them. What happened to the auction after the murder? Nothing, really. It just went on like normal. I guess those rich folks don't... didn't give a hoot. They got some nerve. The nerve of a journalist is nothing to scoff at either. Hmm. <laughs> auction participants... And victim disappeared. If we assume that the murder took place in this storeroom, then we must conclude that the body was here as well. Huh? Isn't that pretty obvious? Do you remember how the participants left the auction? Of course. He'd passed through this storeroom on the way back from the auction. Huh? Exactly. The culprit had to hide the body so that the participants could wouldn't discover it. The real question is, where was the body hidden? Emma, would you mind lending me a hand? Leave it to me. What do you want me to do? Let's see. Use your luminol reagent to test for a blood reaction, if you would please. Okay, let me show you the power of science. A glint in her eyes. Eyes is getting brighter by the second. I start by examining that ladder over there. Based on Miss Hart's picture. The person in the red raincoat headed towards that ladder. Chances are, something will turn up if we check there. 
Just touch anything you want to examine. Okay, I know. I know how to do this. If there's a blood stain on the spot where you're sprayed, you don't get a reaction like this. Even so, no matter how many blood stains. Okay, whatever. Gruesome. Kind of faint. The spray with luminol. You can see it clearly now. Oh, it looks even more gruesome than before. You understand how to look for blood stains now? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'll give it a try. Let's search the rest of the storeroom for bloodstains just like that. First, let's look for a place to spray the luminol reagent. You want to examine this spot? Edgeworth, there's a blood stain here too. However, why is there a blood stain in a place like this? Maybe something that had blood on it was stored inside. Mr. Edgeworth, there are places we still haven't checked yet. So let's continue. Yeah, 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 we get it. I get it. You want to examine? Yes. Let me examine the elevator. It's a reaction. It's a blood stain. Yes, it is. But why in a place like this? Perhaps this is where this is where the murder took place. Huh? It looks like some of the blood dripped down to the floor below. Looks like we found all the blood stains in this storeroom. It seems we have investigated the storeroom sufficiently. Where was the body hidden? Costume trunk. Easy peasy. The reason why we found a bloodstain in the costume trunk is because the murderer hid the body in that box. I wonder who won the bid for it. The trunk, I mean. That, I don't know. In a certain way, everything worked out exactly as someone wanted. Hold it! Hold it! It, could, it couldn't have been in that dressing box. What do you mean? When I first came down here, that box caught my eye too. It was just the right size and would have made the perfect hiding place. That's what I thought, anyway. But I couldn't get the dang thing to open. It had been wrapped up real tight with a locked chain. The murder happened after that, so hiding a body in there would have been impossible, you know? A chain wrapped around it. That's a bit strange. Right now, it doesn't seem to be locked up at all. Huh? That's weird. Maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me or something. And with that, I believe we have examined everything there is to examine here. Well then, let's head on down. Oh, have we decided on our next destination? Hey, Kay. Y yes, Mr. Shields. We wouldn't want you to get lost, so make sure you stay real close to Uncle Ray, okay? Right, I'll follow you closely, Mr. Shields. These two. Since when did they get along like that? <laughs> oh, I think I might have to split this in two. I'm really tired. I might just end it after this chapter. What? 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 Mr. Edgeworth! This place is... Is this the auction hall? No, it's the meeting room from before. Ha! Ha ha ha! How nice of you to drop in, K Faraday. You've got some guts. Oh, now it shows up. I don't know why it's so slow. It's supposed to do that, like, when someone follows, but apparently not, I guess. You got some guts. Hey, you guys! Arrest her! Arrest her! Wait, K is. As for the rest of the riffraff, just show them out the door.
This is tyranny. Yeah, it's tyranny, pal. Miles, this is kind of bad. Light of justice shines above me. <laughs> yeah. Why? Me too. Oh, you're back. I didn't even realize. I apologize. Ah, okay. I get it. I get it. I get it. Let's see. <laughs> the best ninja. <laughs> Better than K. Oh, that's strange. I was aiming for that weak ex-prosecutor. You were clearly aiming at me. Maybe something got in my way, particularly. <laughs> right around there. Francisca. Just what do you think you're doing here, ex-prosecutor Miles Edward? I do not believe that Kay is the culprit behind this incident. You're just an ordinary man without investigation investigation rights. What what you say does not matter. I am Francisca von Karma. I will never stop moving forward. However, you chose to quit. The outcome of our battle has already been decided. I cast away my badge because it became a, mi a millstone around my neck. I shall continue moving forward, even without it. The path I walk will surely lead to the truth. My actions are driven by that belief, and that is something which will never change. So you're saying that you've found a path to the truth? Then show it to me. But if that path proves to be a foolish one, it will not survive my whip. Victim used her keycard and entered this room with a culprit. Then, the culprit stabbed the victim in the chest with the candelabra, killing her. Should the letter make it obvious who the culprit is? Shouldn't the make it? Okay. Pardon. Of course, the crime scene was right here in this room, the PIC meeting room. The proof is in- Proof is the- I was- the proof is the blood stain we found here in the meeting room. That settles it, Miles Edgeworth. Oh, really, no. His one karma seems really confident, doesn't she? Huh, I see. She's a fiery one, isn't she? I don't mind a feisty cutie. So how about an introductory hug? How repulsive. Well, Miles Edgeworth, can you break my logic? If you truly have no intention of stopping here, prove it to me with evidence. Very well. I'll show you, Francisca. The evidence that paves my path. Uh, the proof is the blood stain. There we go. And the blood on the on hidden lift. There we go. If memory served me correctly, the blood in the meeting room was found in front of the in front of the statue of Lady Justice, was it not? To murder someone before Lady Justice, this culprit knows no fear. I wonder about that. Have a look at this piece of evidence. Blood was found in the storeroom right above the meeting room. As you can see, there are signs that is that it has stripped down onto the floor below, and right under the hidden lift is. The statue of Lady Justice! And you understand, the murder the murder did not take place here. The killer murdered the victim in the storeroom, and then moved the body to this room. What Lady Justice witnessed was a coward trying to conceal their crime. And not the moment of the murder. She's smiling. Pardon me, I just remembered a conversation quite similar to this one. As I expected, Miles Edgeworth, such a naivete couldn't possibly be an act. Flora, you're here! How is Mr. Edgeworth naive? 
Я лучше. Have you forgotten, or are you just playing the foolish fool? The amount of blood in the meeting room is clearly greater than in the storeroom. Uh, please don't hit me and then just ignore me. Yeah. Such a large amount of blood couldn't have simply dripped from the floor above. And even if it, if, if it had, there should have been much more blood left behind in the, in the storeroom. The murder could not have occurred anywhere other than this meeting room. Hmm. You're as predictable as always, Francisca. What? The difference in the amount of blood is just as you say. The question is, why does such a different difference exist? That issue is trivial. I've already explained it with my perfect logic. In that case, how do you explain the blood that was found in the storeroom? I don't suppose you're going to tell me that it somehow sprayed all the way up there. Like a water fountain? No way! Exactly. It's impossible. In other words, the reason for the difference in the amount of blood is... The amount of blood in the meeting room and the storeroom are different because... The weapon was pulled out. The victim died of a stab wound, naturally. There would be a significant amount of blood loss. And that's obvious just from looking at the blood stain. And that's so weird. She was attacked in the storeroom, but there was less blood found there than. <sighs> Silence, you third rate prosecutor. But I'm the best. <sighs> Do you know when you lose the most blood after getting stabbed with a sharp object? Okay, have, have a good day at work. And I hope to see you again soon. Ha! Huh, I know! It's when the sharp object is pulled out, right? Precisely. After being stabbed with the candelabra, the body was moved to the meeting room. And then, the murder weapon was pulled out right here in this very room. Yes, Emma is here. Also, um... um uh... Edgeworth quit. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Has he joined? No, he hasn't. But, uh... He literally placed his, uh... Prosecutor's badge on, like, the, uh... What's it called? On like, not a table. It's called something special, but I can't remember what it's called anyways. Uh, a thing that isn't like in the middle of the room here. You can see it now, but when we like, you know, get out of this, then yeah. That would account for the difference in the amount of blood that was left behind. Why would the culprit go through all that trouble? Altar, maybe. No, not an altar either. Most likely to give the impression that the murder occurred in the meeting room. It's not a church. It seems Miss Crane's keycard was used last night. But based on the time of use, it must have been employed by the culprit to mislead us. In all likelihood, it was the culprit who used the keycard to enter the meeting room. Why would the culprit have needed to do that? Perhaps they feared that the storeroom would be found out during the investigation. If they were involved in the auction, they would not have wanted it to become public. The auction, you say? Perhaps you should go upstairs and see for yourself what items are on display. I'm sure that will allow you to understand what occurred here. Impressive, Miles Edgeworth. You're willing to go that far to protect her. There's something big lurking behind the scenes of this case. Kay simply got caught up in it. You're exaggerating. Am I now? More than anyone, I would think you would understand the significance behind all this. Why would you, a prosecutor working with Interpol, be involved in a domestic case? Wasn't your objective to crush a certain international smuggling ring? Yeah, K is the murder suspect. If your search for smuggled goods has led you here, 
Then, isn't this feeling I have related to the case? I'm relieved. You haven't lost your touch, even though you've turned in your badge. I've heard about your situation, from Scruffy over there. Oh, uh, um, sorry sir, I just wanted to help out somehow. A wise decision, detective. Francisca, are you the one in charge of this case? There's an Interpol pursuing the black market auction. And what if I am? That's not something you need to know. So you knew all knew about all this from the very beginning. You knew the black market auction was being held right here. Hey, hey, mind if I butt in? About that gal who turned up dead. You Hey, I ain't done talking yet. Hey, I you ain't changed a lick. This case doesn't need even a fragment of your faulty testimony. What are you saying? I'm a bona fide journal. Yeah, a lot of us are true, by the way. Back then, you gave false testimony. This from Karma seems really to really dislike Lada. I can't say she's fond of her. Ain't that crane gal one of them PSD members? She's a spitting image of the conductor. I reckon she's... She hit me. She hit me again. What is the meaning of this? Answer me, Miles Edgeworth. From his heart's testimony, we had... He obtained a description of what the conductor was wearing, and it matches what the victim, Jill Crane, was wearing. You mean to say, the one who was murdered was the conductor? Miss Von Karma, maybe you should come. It would seem that a new fact has just been brought to light. Indeed, I came here in pursuit of the black market au auction in order to arrest the organizer of the event. In other words, the conductor. If we believe Miss Hart's testimony, then the conductor is already dead. Wouldn't this mean that your investigation has ended in vain? That's right. However, I swear on my name that I will not return empty-handed. I challenge you, Miles Edgeworth. The challenge is fine, but why is she readying her whip like she's out for a victim of her own? I will concede your argument. The murder occurred in the storeroom, correct? That would mean the culprit is someone who participated in the auction. If that photograph photographer is correct, the victim was the conductor and the culprit was the customer. The culprit waited for the victim in the storeroom where the goods were delivered. Then, they stabbed the victim in the chest with a candelabra in the storeroom. And that is all. Trust you have no objections. Unfortunately, that is not the case, because there is a hole in your testimony. As expected of Mr. Edgeworth, I didn't notice anything at all. Well then, please settle this with one blow. Yes, of course. Watch as I crush her logic. His heart was in the storeroom at the time. Could the culprit really have been waiting there? I don't know where she was hiding, but since you've, been, you've seen it, you must know as well. There are numerous hiding places in that storeroom. So the culprit was hiding while they waited for the victim to arrive. I believe the crime occurred after the auction ended. After all, the victim was the organizer of the auction, the conductor. During the auction, the organizer would have to be in front of the customers the entire time after the auction ended. Please add that statement to your testimony. I believe the crime occurred after the after the auction ended. Lotta's testimony, Lotta's testimony. As I thought, you were one step behind. What did you say? The victim was not the conductor. And I have proof. Miss Hart's testimony. Photo photographer's testimony is not trust trustworthy. What are y'all saying? I'm a bona fide journal. Oh. Seize your idle chatter. Yeehaw! 
Francisca, calm down and listen. Miss Hart witnessed a part of the murder. The main point here is that after witnessing the murder, she says the auction continued. That's right. Sure as can be. They all just kept going on shamelessly. Do you think the auction could have continued without someone conducting it? If the victim was not the, conduct if the uh, conductor, the person killed must have been a customer. No! As I said from the beginning, Kay is not the culprit. After all, she herself was attacked by someone and lost consciousness. In which case, that would also make her a victim. If the auction continued after the incident occurred. Yes, and the victim was not the conductor, but a cost customer. That's enough! Voice. Order in the court. The chairman will now enter. My, my. No need to be so stiff. Actually, feel free to call me Lacey. Uh, this is, uh, Sebastian's father. Well then, Blazy, what brings you here? Huh? Well, I just, well, well, I just wanted to see if my idiot son was working hard is all. Is this kind of father-son relationship really healthy? I had come to light a fire under you, but it seems I found an unexpected bonus. To think that the criminal who had, who has become the talk of the town will be here of all places. Everyone, restrain the suspect at once. Please wait. K Faraday is not the cult. Silence! This is quite troubling, Edgeworth. Didn't I tell you earlier? The PIC desires a swift resolution to this case. Um. Anyways, it, it's that thing in the middle there that Edgeworth placed his badge on. If it's not, we could lose our trust with the public. They'd call us the waste of time committing. You know, it's troubling for me as well, that sort of thing. At my age, too. And on top of that, an illegal investigation is not something that I can overlook. Have you forgotten? You are no longer a prosecutor. You have lost all your authority. Furthermore... You have aided a criminal in evading the law. Yes, yes, that's right. You are so reliable, Courtney. I am aware of the consequences of my actions. You may punish me as you wish. However, we have found a new suspect. It's the person pictured here. Kay Faraday was attacked by this person, and... There is no need for your explanation. Just recently, a red raincoat was discovered in the vicinity of this building. The victim's blood and cherry blossom petals were found on the hood. Cherry blossom petals. Now that you mention it. On the viewing platform. Yes, they probably stuck on due to the blood. They were littered around this blood stain. We received the forensic reports on the blood, you know. There's no doubt about it. The person in that photo is the victim. Jill Crane. Did you say? Impossible. It would completely destroy the foundations of our logic. I believe the person in the red raincoat was the culprit. And now it turns out, that person is actually the murder victim. Wait, if that's the case, then the prime suspect would be... Miss Faraday, you met a person in a red raincoat on the rooftop, did you not? Yes, I did, but... The person in the red raincoat was the murder victim, and Kay Faraday came into contact with that person. Since one of the parties is now dead, what happened next should be clear. Kay was attacked by that person. As a victim, it would be impossible for her to be the culprit. There is no evidence she was attacked, is there? Furthermore, we must consider the possibility that the victim fought back. It's far too early to come to the conclusions. Conclusion, K is not the criminal. You're wrong. K 
Okay. That's wrong. Even though I don't want to believe it myself. After hearing about the raincoat, I finally remembered. I only remember a little bit. What I saw that night. The culprit. Is me. I remember looking down. At the person in the red raincoat. Mr. Edgeworth, it was me! The culprit was me all along! That can't be right. Why? Why do I have that memory? The person collapsed before my eyes. Engulfed in a pool of blood. Why didn't I do anything? It must have been... Because I killed her. It is clear to me the validity of Kay Faraday's memory. Didn't you doubt it until just now, pal? Congratulations, Miss Faraday. Your courage will surely allow you to be forgiven. Now, let us rejoice in the blessings of the Goddess of Law. Allow me to give my opinion as an international prosecutor. Her actions as a criminal are... Hurry, arrest Kay Faraday at once. How dare you behave that way before me! Being too forceful, further verification is necessary. I'd even go so far to say this is unlawful. Unfortunately, the law does not side with you. It sides with me, you see. Well, you know, the beautiful bond between you two has been etched deeply into my heart. That reminds me, we seem to have forgotten one additional suspect. Edgeworth. That's you. Uh, K was attacked. Uh, something, something. Pushed down. She thought it was from, like, this 50... Uh, 50 floor building. Uh, but apparently it was just, like, down, like, a hatch to, like, a hidden storage room or whatever. Um, and she lost her memory. That's what happened to Kay. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> Who's that, pal? Mr. Edgeworth hasn't done anything wrong. I beg to differ. That's right. You see? He's no longer a prosecutor, sadly enough. Your actions have gone too far this time. An illegal investigation and assisting in the escape of a criminal. I cannot even think of you as a former prosecutor. Now, humbly accept your punishment. <laughs> Oh yes, that's right. I believe the plan for today was to hold your hearing before the PIC. Why don't we leave the hearing for tomorrow? Even though the result is already crystal clear. You should think long and hard about what you've done. Very long and very hard. Court is now adjourned. Sweet Jesus. Oh my god, no, this is so fucking long. Oh my god. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. I was gonna stop, but then you showed up, and I was like, might as well continue. I just need to, like, grab something to eat real quick. BRB! Oh, 
My sister made some kanelbullar. <laughs> and uh, she came over here with my mom. And one of my nephews today. That was a lot of fun. Yes, kanelbullar. <laughs> mhm. Mm mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Hmm. I, I also I said um Ah, I see. You should get like a uh, one of those like uh, combi ovens. I had that in my previous apartment. I still have it. I just use this microwave now, but the fact that I can actually use it like as 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 a as an oven, that's cool. I love that. And I just like responded to that um poor case she wouldn't have killed the victim and I was like where's your proof? <laughs> where's your proof she didn't? I swear, this has raisins in it. Okay, mine though. Are there only like two parts left? I don't know. I don't know if there actually are raisins. I just felt like I could taste it, but maybe I couldn't. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Hold on, wait, is there only like one more part left? Well, not, not one more part, but like two more parts of Yeah. But they're rather long. Hmm. Like, actually, maybe not. Who knows? Oh, this is so good. <laughs> um, I mean, I've got, I've been, I've gone through like four chapters so far. So, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> One chapter took three days. Music stopped. Hmm. And it's like less than, technically it's less than three hours because I got distracted somewhere along the way. So technically. 
So who knows if it will take like two hours for both or if it will take four hours. I guess we'll find out. Oh, it was it was beautiful. I laughed so hard. <laughs> I can't believe that Edgeworth actually said that. And now you're like, eh, might as well just keep it. <laughs> mm. Okay. I get it. I can't believe Edgeworth is in jail. <laughs> The day before my birthday. <laughs> this is the second time I've been in this cell. Not again, Edward. All of my evidence has been taken from me. The only thing I have left is Kay's Yatagarasu's badge. I'm worried about Kay. Is she alright? Pardon, criminal? The culprit. It's me. I remember looking down. The person in the red raincoat. Mr. Edgeworth, it was me. The culprit was me all along. I have a visitor. Please hurry out. A visitor? Who could it be? Someone by the name of Dick Gumshoe. Are you going to turn him down? No. It will be hard to face him. Listen, I don't fucking know. Courtney does whatever the fuck she wants. Wait here. Hmm. He's not going to stay and keep watch. Pardon me. Ma'am? George Courtney, you have what? <laughs> Hush. Please have a seat. Why are you here? I was told a detective had come. If I didn't instruct them to tell you that, you wouldn't be sitting here right now. I can't think of anything she'd need from me at this point. I should try to figure out what she wants. Your visitation rights have been restricted to begin with. It's as if I'm some monstrous criminal. I suppose my credibility has hit rock bottom. But of course, your friends have fared a little bit be better, though. That lawyer and that girl were both quite worked up. Mr. Shields and Emma. When I last saw them, they were giving one of the guards quite an earful. What? You don't mean... Be grateful. The goddess of law has been quite busy. They were spared punishment. I, I think you're just delusional. <laughs> it certainly seems like you have plenty of time for small talk. Oh, yes. Prosecutor von Karma is presently continuing the investigation. You were worried about them, right? I guess she saw right through me. Cut to the chase. What happened to my voice? Hello? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, let's fucking go like this. Let's cut to the chase. Exactly what... <laughs> <laughs> Exactly what are you planning? I'm not planning. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Sorry, that was too funny. I am not planning anything. And there is merely a question I wish to ask. <laughs> You're asking me. Yes, of course. Who else is here? Objectively speaking, you are a clever individual and you have a sharp mind. As a prosecutor, you are highly talented and capable. You being ironic, your sarcasm falls short. I am being completely sincere, and that is why I cannot understand. Take this case, for example. You're up against the PIC, 
there is no chance for you to come out on top. Even a child could understand. And yet you... Huh. Perhaps my younger self would not have would not have done something so reckless. The me from before had power. That's why I thought justice was on my side. Just like you right now. <laughs> However, because of a certain man, my self-centered sense of justice was broken down. The music. The music. You <laughs> Ever since then, I began to see people in a different light. Because of Bay, I know. <laughs> I am able to serve as a prosecutor, and because of the support of the people around me. People like Detective Gumshoe, and all the other investigators. And Kay as well. Honestly, even I'm surprised at how much I've changed. I see. Is that how it is? I've come to understand you a little more. Understand me? Not likely. Someone like you, who forces her own sense of justice onto others, could never understand. Yes, fucking drag her! Drag her! My god! I wonder about that. Is that what you think? If I could say one thing, it would be that this conversation has been very interesting. That is all. Our conversation is coming to an end. However, I have one last thing to tell you. The date of your hearing has been set. I came here today to inform you. Today, in the PIC meeting room, may you humbly accept your fate. If that's all you wanted to say, couldn't you have just sent a messenger? The holy words of the goddess of law simply cannot be entrusted to others. With that, Mr. Edgeworth, I bid you farewell. I shall be seeing you again later. I hate that you're so pretty. <laughs> How can you be so fucking annoying? Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! <laughs> Sorry. I mustn't neglect my personal appearance just because I'm in a holding cell. Interesting. Prosecutor or not. This is my personal duty. Hmm, my color is slightly bent. There, a well-groomed appearance reflects a well-groomed mind. From here on, I'll need to focus myself more than ever. There's a dining menu sitting on the, on the desk. It seems I can get food delivered if I pay for it. Let's see. A moldy white bread lunch set. Switch to moldy whole wheat bread for an extra dollar. Oatmeal and grit set meal. For a limited time. Get extra gruel at no additional cost. Thank goodness I'm not hungry right now. Mm -hmm. There's a post- This a poster. <laughs> There's an imposter! <laughs> There's a poster on the wall next to the toilet. They are currently out of toilet paper. Please be prepared if you wish to use the toilet. What does it mean by be prepared? <laughs> it's a simple bed. I don't expect it to be very comfortable to sleep on. If it were Detective Gumshoe, he would probably snore loudly while sleeping like a log. I may never get a chance to work with him again. However, this is the path I chose. I won't regret it. Sir. You're too precious. I can't. There are thick bars placed securely on the window. It reminds me, I watched a movie that had iron bars just like these. It was about a plan to escape a prison by filing down the iron bars. Of course, 
I wouldn't do such a thing. I would I don't even have a file. No, even if I had one, I still wouldn't do it. There's a poster hanging on in the hallway. The dice and slice game. Roll the dice and decide your daily menu. Dice and slice game has been cancelled due to the warden's arrest. We sincerely apologize to everyone who was looking forward to it. There's no need to apologize for cancelling such a silly game. Another visitor. Okay. Huh. It seems you're all right. I'm relieved. For now. You know, this is kind of touching. <laughs> Look a little down, Kay. Please, cheer up. You didn't do anything wrong. I guarantee it. Please, just accept it. I am a murderer. That's not true. Why won't you believe in yourself? What should I believe in? I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing to believe in. That's not true. Before you lost your memories, you literally jumped into my life. As a result, your words and actions have become engraved in my memories. That's the mark you left behind. How can you call that nothing? Believe in your innocence. That's why you must believe in yourself as well. Thank you. But it's no use. Look at all the misfortune I've brought upon you. If you can, please forget it all. Your memories of Kay for a day. Kay! You know, this takes me back. In my youth, I too was a gallant. Is this kind of justice that the PIC seeks? Hmm. Justice, huh? I wonder. This man, what is he planning? Why is he pushing things forward so forcefully? It all seems too unnatural. Is there a hidden agenda? There's no time left. It's all or nothing now. Well then, I must take my leave. Hold it! No matter how you look at it, Kay's arrest was unnatural. There must be something behind it. Hey, hey. I'm a busy man, you know. I'm kind of a big deal, you see. I trust this won't take up too much of my time. In order to make it out of this situation, I must break through his defense. There are plenty of things I want to ask, but my time is limited. First, I'll ask about why he rushed the arrest. I have no intention of letting him push me around. I will overcome this difficult situation. Okay. Why did you rush your arrest? I would like a clear explanation. Explanation? What are you talking about? Don't play dumb with me. You clearly did not follow the proper procedures. Okay, okay. Maybe you should pipe down a bit. Do you even know the position you're in? Suppose we let the criminal escape. What do you think will happen? What will happen? I will be made to take responsibility, you see. I do hope you understand. Just take my advice and stay out of this, if you know what's good for you. I refuse. Kay is innocent. You know, this is so pitiful. It brings me to tears. I want you to just give up. Things were finally going well. Things were going well, you say? That's a strange way to put it. It almost sounds as if you personally wanted Kay to be arrested. Far more than necessary. Haven't you lost your impartiality? Hmm, you think so? That certainly wasn't my intention, you see. Edgeworth, my boy. You're reading too much into it. You skillfully avoided the issue. However, I still have some serious doubts about Kay's arrest. Next, I shall ask him if the investigation was sufficient. You can't miss even the tiniest piece of information. That's the only way to break through the, this situation. Mm. 
how much time was spent on the investigation. You know, I wonder about that. I don't really remember, you see. There is no way I can accept such a careless answer. Like I said, I don't remember. My memory is not as sharp as it used to be, you see. Sometimes I even forget my own son's name. I don't care about your idiot son. I want your answer regarding the investigation. Yes, he really is an idiot. Even though I don't remember raising him like that. <coughs> There's no end to this. He just keeps on dodging the question. Let's try another line of attack. It's hard to say that the investigation was sufficient. The arrest, was it under your authority? My, my. You right really look that important. The Prosecutorial Investigation Committee. Chairman. It's quite a prominent title. Not that I care much for it. But that was rather blunt. I'm so shocked. I could cry. I'm sorry. Flattery was never my forte. If you keep talking like that, it's towards me. You'll never get your prosecutor's badge back, you know? Let me make this clear right now. I do not live for the sake of my badge. Status means nothing to me. Do you understand? Young. So young. Let me teach you something as your senior in life. What you're saying right now is far too naive, you see? The look in his eyes has changed. He might respond differently to some of my questions now. This is my chance. How much time was spent? Okay, I already did this. Hmm? You sure? Quite. Oh, okay, that's not it. Ridiculous. Oh, okay, that's not it. Okay. Should still some remorse, you know. Sorry, I'm skipping a lot. Don't you get it? I hold your faith in my hands. In any case, even if you obtain some information, there's nothing you can do. Just give up already. I refused. Mind if I ask why? It's simple. The truth is fading away. That's all there is to it. I see. I'm starting to understand what kind of person you are. But you know, it's all useless. It's enough to make me cry. I give it up. The girl's guilt has already been decided. That's strange. The way you said that... Said that, it almost sounds like it was decided from the very beginning. What are you trying to say? Evil thanks, I never even noticed that. Yes, it's clearly unnatural. Everything is progressing, as if Kay's guilt was predetermined. It was in Kay's arrest, planned from the start. I see. That's an interesting theory. But I don't have time to indulge in your flights of fancy, you know. Why don't we put an end to this silly conversation? C curses! He's trying to get away! Before that, I must find if find out if the arrest was lawful. It's still very faint, but I'm beginning to see the path to the truth. I can't let this opportunity slip by. Please wait. There is still something I want to ask you. Grow weary of our little tete a tete. No te 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 te. Stop using French! I don't know French! Or titi a titi? <laughs> That's obviously the only way to say that, right? Titi a titi? Mm -hmm. Oh.
Tête à tête, ok. Tété à tété <rire> Oui, c'est tête à tête. <rire> ok. It's face to face. That's apparently what it means. Let's keep it short, ok? Come on. Wait, I'm stressed. <laughs> Just say face to face. What's the basis? Okay. If I put together what you have told me up until now, I cannot help but say that there is no basis for case arrest. Yes, yes, I understand. I understand, you see. But you know. It doesn't really matter either way. You can't overturn her arrest. How irresponsible. Do you still claim to be a man of the law? My, my. Those are some harsh words, you know. Hmm. You know, you're starting to make me a little angry. You see, to be honest, I really can't answer all of your questions, you know. It's just the position I'm in, you see. I'm a busy man, you know. And you're just pretending to be busy. It's cruel, you know. This old chunk of coal has been working like a dog. Pretending? What do you think that would, would accomplish? Sorry, I just like... You don't want to talk about it, okay? You don't want to talk about the case. Isn't that why you're trying to get away from this place? How sad. Yes, how sad indeed. You really suspect little old me? I do suspect you, and I'm confident about it. There was clearly no basis for Kay's arrest. My, my. Have you forgotten? Wasn't there evidence? The mask, the letter, and the corsage. All were found in the girl's possession. Not to mention, she even confessed. All of this serves to prove her crime. Any objections? <laughs> Objection. You see, you have no response. It's true, I have no objections. Although, there is one point that bothers me. This man seems awfully familiar with the evidence. To remember everything without missing a beat. That intrigues me. This could be a useful clue. So then we're to ask, and then here. And here, who made the decision? There we go. Who was the one who made the de decision to arrest her? Hmm, well, I can't say I remember. Growing old is a terrible thing, you see. Memory is not what it used to be, you know? Perhaps I should use that clue. Don't play dumb with me. Didn't you remember all of the evidence in full detail just now? Stop pretending to be a forgetful man when things aren't going your way. Now then, who was the one who made the decision to arrest her? I see. You're a sharp one, aren't you? You know, I wish my son could learn from you. Because he's a real idiot. <clears throat> I'm not interested in your son. Who made the decision for the arrest? You're a bad man, you know. Don't you already know? The one who ordered her arrest. The person right in front of me. I'm certain of it. Ouch. make it sound like I committed some kind of injustice. I guess I'll have to clear that up. My honor's, my honor's at stake here, you see. Very well, I'll continue to play along with you. Until you are satisfied. What is most crucial here is... How much this man knows about this case. If I can get him to reveal that... It's do or die. If I can overcome this, I'll reach the truth. You seem pretty familiar with these, with the case. I'm a wise man, you know. 
I'm familiar with most things, you see. I don't think it was very wise of you to arrest Case Kate in this case. I'm a very busy man. I can't I can end this conversation anytime I want, you know? Why don't you forget about that? This would have already been over if you had simply answered my questions. If you give me a proper answer, I won't take any more of your time. I will ask you once again, why are you so familiar with this case? I read the case files, you see. Honestly, I was it was quite a drag, you know, but it's my job, so what could I do? Because of my position, you see, I can't just skip out on it. <laughs> well, I had some time to kill, so I read the whole thing, you see. Oh, you said you were busy. That's strange. Didn't you just say you were you were you were very busy? Aren't your faults slowly coming to light now? If you truly wish to protect your posi position, I would advise you to resign res res resign the, the arrest order. You, you really are desperate, you know. That never say die attitude. It touches my heart. You know, it's unfortunate that all your hard work was for naught. Because we discovered her unconscious body near the crime scene, you see. Well, this is the first I've heard of Kay's condition when she was found. She was unconscious in the storeroom. That's right. The source of that information is classified, though. This man knows things even I don't know. Does he know the whole story behind this case? This could be a useful clue. Okay. The suspect regarding Kay. How much do you know about her? She's a suspect in this case. That's all I know, you see. It's God's honor. Perhaps I should use that clue. Something you've said feels out of place. You know about things that the crime scene investigation never revealed. Why is that? Just how much of the truth do you know? Hahaha. <laughs> You're making that forceful face again. You know, it kind of makes me want to do the same. Like this. You really are a persistent one, you know? I can admire that, you see. I will take that as a compliment. Can't you give it a rest already? At my age, my body is not as strong as it once was, you know. There is no one else who could be there. Culprit besides her. She was even given that much evidence to show that she committed the crime. She was given evidence, you say. That's an odd choice of words. It almost sounds as if she did not possess them under her own will. I see. You really do have a fine eye for the details. It's expected of a former prodigy prosecutor. You've already found your answer, haven't you? I'm listening, so go ahead and say it. There's no need to hold back. I have finally wrenched open the heavy door to the, to the truth. <clears throat> Now, all that remains is to strike the final blow. Kay is not the culprit. My, my. That's a rather, rather bold claim, you know. Anyone can shout objections at the top of their lungs, you see. It's the former prodigy prosecutor. I shall break through this with that clue. Kay was framed. The true culprit is pinning the blame on her. That is my answer. Boom. Yes, yes, you're a clever one. It almost makes me feel bad that your prosecutor's badge was taken away, you know? Yes, it is as you say. Checkmate. You arrested Kay, even when you never 
when you knew of the existence of the true culprit. Don't toy with me. There is no way such an act would be tolerated. You sure are green, you know. That's what a prosecutor is supposed to do. It will all work out fine if we make her guilty. Who would desire such a revolution? Resolution? If I had to say, maybe the PIC, and also maybe me, you know? <laughs> when I heard your word, words just now, I could barely hold back my tears, you know? It was just so splendid, you see? And it burns me up inside. I'm not the most perfect piece of work, you know? So I can't forgive such youthfulness. You say the truth is important, but you know, once you know the real value of the truth holds, I wonder if you can still say the same thing. What are you trying to say? When you get to where I am, you can just create your own truths anytime you want. Hey, Faraday is the culprit. That was a truth that I simply manufactured out of thin air. <laughs> good, very good. That face. An expression. You are such a desperate one, you see. That's why I really want to bully you, you know? You see, even if you know the truth, there is simply nothing you can do. And that's the real value of truth. So shocking that it's die for, you know? <laughs> why won't you pursue the true culprit? How much of the truth do you know? You understand? You understand now? The truth that you believe in is worthless, you see? Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Powerless former prosecutor? You! Ooh, scary, scary. You know, I guess the friends of a heinous criminal are also quite heinous themselves. Place! You! And like this, you see, one more person will disappear before me. Ah, here come the waterworks. Your series are mine just won't stop, you know. Everything will be decided in today's deliberation. <clears throat> the best, more like the bastard. Uh. There we go. Oh, snap. Case innocence. He will definitely prove it. Ten members are present. The quorum has been met. From here on out, let the council begin. Today's deliberation shall be about Miles Edgeworth's aptitude and ability as a prosecutor. Let our members discuss this matter with a clear conscience of the goddess of law. A clear conscience will make me laugh. Courtney, please give us your report. On April 5th, Prosecutor Edgeworth carried out an illegal investigation and resisted arrest. He was arrested by two of our members who caught him in the act, myself and Blaze the Best. Prosecutor Edgeworth disrupted the investigation of Attorney Jill Crane's murder. He claims that the culprit, Kay Faraday, was arrested without sufficient evidence. Even now, his claim remains unchanged. Tell us more about the murder incident. On April 5th, the victim's body was found here in the PIC meeting room. Regarding the details... Hi, Sebastian the Best, the best prosecutor, will enlighten you. The prosecutor in charge, Sebastian the Best, will explain the rest of the details. The murder happened on the night of April 4th. The victim was one Jill Crane. On the same night, a black market auction was being held in this very meeting room. I guess Miss Crane was taking part in the au action. Uh, auction. Yep. 
The murder occurred in the middle of the auction, did it not? Miss Crane was found. She was dressed like the conductor of the auction. Uh, Why can't I not fucking read? Auction! Auction! What? Why? However, based on the fact that the auction occurred after the murder occurred, I deduced that Miss Crane could not have been the conductor. You weren't the one who made that deduction. Sebastian, please show everyone the basis for the arrest of the culprit. You got it, Justine. Kay Faraday was unable to bear the weight of her good conscience. I believe you mean her guilty conscience. Yes, it was her guilty conscience that drove her to confess to the crime. According to her confession, on the roof of this building, she met a figure in the red raincoat on the viewing platform. So Crane was wearing a red raincoat. Yes, that's correct. The culprit used the conductor's clothes as a red herring to mislead us. At the time of the murder, Miss Crane was wearing a red raincoat. It was I who discovered the raincoat near this building. He did? I'm sure it was the forensics team who found it. To be more precise, it was the forensics team under Sebastian's orders who discovered it. Thought as much. According to the blood analysis, the person in the red raincoat and Miss Crane were the same person. The decisive evidence is the culprit's own confession. She testified that she killed her. That's right. The culprit is Kay Faraday. It couldn't have been anyone else but her. Well then, Edgeworth, if you have any objections, let's hear them. I have no objections. I see, I see. It seems all the fight's gone out of you after our little overnight stay. I have no objections to your claim that I investigated legally. I admit to that. However, I object to the claim that Kay is the culprit. I will testify that Sebastian's investigation was fair and just. <laughs> of course it was, Justine. Don't you know that I am the fairest of them all? Edgeworth, my boy. Despite how things may seem, I actually kind of like you. If, and this is just an if, you see, if you were to withdraw your objection, you might be sitting on this side of the bench tomorrow. I'll ask you one more time, Edgeworth. Do you have any objections? Don't take me for a fool. I'd advise you to watch what you say. This man is the one who should watch what he's saying. I am talking about the case, not about the, not about the chair. I demand a testimony, by all means, let me hear it. I want to know how the PIC understands this case. A testimony from us, huh? Fine then. If that's what it takes to make you happy. Courtney, give him the materials from the investigation. Sir, but that's... It's the end of the line for him. I'll let him go out in a blaze of glory. If you insist, Mr. Chairman... Why don't we have Courtney give the testimony? I have no objections. Mr. Edgeworth... Don't worry, Kay. You just watch from over there. Miss Crane went to the black market auction as a customer. The red raincoat was one of the items up for adop- For adoption. Auction. Why am I thinking adoption? Why? What? what? We believe that she left her seat after winning the bid for it. The only exit from the storeroom is the hatch that leads to the viewing platform. Miss Crane went out to the viewing platform where she was attacked by Kay Faraday. That was how she met her end, and that concludes my summary of the case. The red raincoat was up for auction. Is that a fact? It is quite likely. Likely. Quite likely is not a fact, ma'am. The red raincoat had been a piece of evidence in the assassination attempt on the president of Zheng Fa, as you well know. Originally, it should have been stored in an appropriate place, but when I asked about it, I learned that it went missing, and it somehow made, it, made its way to the black market auction. 
Certainly, a natural conclusion. My, my. Well done, Courtney. Your explanation is as clear as ever. I am much obliged. Prosecutor Edgeworth, will you concede defeat now? Heh. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't plan on it. I see. I am relieved. Relieved? What does she mean? Come to think of it. Her reason for questioning me yesterday remains a mystery. Just what is she thinking? Oh, wait, uh, which one is it? It's, uh, Miss Crane went out. There, and then Lotus photo. Judge Courtney, I have found it to be strange for a while. Why is Miss Hart here with us? She is an eyewitness to this case. Isn't it only natural for her to be in, in attendance? Ah, shucks. <laughs> I reckon I'm more of an ear witness than an eye witness. <laughs> it seems that gaining the trust of others isn't your strong point, Judge Courtney. Perhaps I simply do not wish to be as tactless as you. It appears you have failed to get the witness to tell you the most vital information. Please look at this photo. This was taken by Miss Hart. This photo seems to have been taken in the storeroom. And um, what of it? According to your reasoning, the incident took place on the viewing platform. However, Miss Hart encountered the incident in, in the storeroom. That's right. It had taken place just before this photo was taken. Wait, if that's true, then Justine's reasoning... Exactly. It does not hold up. <laughs> Miss Hart, allow me to ask you again. You saw the person in the photo with your own eyes, correct? I sure did. I see them playing his day with my own two eyes. And what did you think at the time? I figured I was about to give me a big scoop, you know? I guess that makes sense. Ahem. <clears throat> That's not what I meant. What did you think of that person? Huh? Well, I reckon she'd help me bring home the bacon. Are you mocking me? Aw, oh, shucks. Don't make that scary old face. I wish it's a harmless little joke. The person in the red raincoat? I reckon they were the culprit. I hope you understand now. The crime occurred in the... Prosecutor Edgeworth, I cannot understand your argument if you do not say it out loud. Ma'am, he is not... A prosecutor anymore, technically speaking. If you had simply asked, I would have been more than willing to explain. Explain what? The sounds Miss Hart heard may not necessarily be related to the case. That's impossible. Enough of your excuses. Was the voice that Miss Hart heard really that of Miss Crane? Such a shady conversation. Must have had something to do with the case. What did her voice sound like? Her voice? Well, it, it beats me. How was that supposed to know? They were both using voice changers. Yes, the voices Miss Hart heard had been altered by a device. We must therefore question whether or not they may... They have any bearing on this case. Hmm. You need not object just because you wish to sigh. Judge Courtney, it seems I have greatly overestimated you. No, no, Courtney is quite amazing, you see. You claim that the sound Miss Hart heard, sounds Miss Hart heard, have no bearing on this case. Even if they do not, it doesn't change the fact that the crime took place in the, in the storeroom. At the very least, the crime must have occurred before the victim went up to the rooftop. The reason being, this evidence proves the crime occurred before the victim went up to the viewing platform. Oh, blood! First, I thought the person in the red raincoat was the culprit. Well, Miss Hart's testimony certainly made it sound that way. Precisely. It was because she saw that the person's hand was covered in blood. Anyone who heard her testimony would have arrived at the same conclusion. The person in the red raincoat was the culprit, and the blood in their hand was the victim's. However, if the person in the red raincoat is the victim, 
then the situation changes completely. Since blood can be seen in this photo, it must have been taken after the crime occurred. It seems we've been under the wrong impression in regards to the victim's condition. This photo shows the true condition of the victim. The victim is still alive. The victim was definitely attacked in the storeroom. Immediately afterward, the victim was seen with blood on her hand. That must mean... The victim was still alive even after she was attacked. Blood on her hand must have come from her own wound. No way! Are you saying that she died from a hand injury? No, that is not the case. I suspect she just held her hand against the wound. It can't be seen in the photo, but at this moment she must have already suffered a fatal wound. Uh huh, that's true. It changes a lot of things, you know. It seems you understand. This refutes the allegations against Kay. Kay encountered the victim after this picture was taken. I believe at that point in time, the victim was already on the verge of death. It's like the Kay just happened to be present when the victim reached the end of her strength. That is quite the coincidence. Indeed, I can only say that she was the wrong at the wrong place at the wrong time. Prosecutor Edgeworth. I don't know why I keep referring to you as a prosecutor, even though you have given up your badge. It seems you have forgotten a crucial fact. Ah, uh, you mean that, right? You must be pretending that he hasn't noticed it, you see? What did you say? Are you implying that I forgot something? Courtney, I think it's about time you gave him, give him his last rights. Hey, Pops, just ease with me, you know? And order her around like that. You know, even though you're my son, you're so embarrassing. I'm not embarrassing! I'm sorry, but you're both rather embarrassing. Justine, give Mr. Edgeworth his, um... Very well. I shall give him his last rites. When the body was found, there were three wounds in Miss Crane's chest. I'm sure you're well aware what kind of wounds these were, right? Yes, she was stabbed in the heart with the three-pronged candelabra. Is there any person who, would, who could survive such an injury? Please take a close look at the autopsy record. Report. Record. Can you still say the same thing after reading it? Well done, Justine. With this, Mr. Edgeworth will, I will offer a rebuttal, of course. Why would you do that? Didn't you hear what Justine just said? Of course I did, and I still plan to object to it. It's not fair! You're always opposing me at every turn. It was never my intention to oppose you. Huh? Really? It's simply not worth my time. I see. So that's how it is. Yep. Yep. After all, I'm... That's enough, you know. You're embarrassing your father, you see. Huh? What do you mean, Pops? Oh, there it is. Dumbass. Chairman the Best, do you know what this is? It seems to be a red raincoat. How about it, Courtney? The victim, Miss Crane, was wearing this earlier. Prosecutor Edgeworth, must I repeat my explanation to you all over again? I suppose it just might come to that, Judge Courtney. Answer me this. This red raincoat was stained with blood. Do you happen to remember where specifically those blood stains were located? Of course I do. They were on the hood. Wait, it can't be. Hmm? What does this mean? Judge Courtney, were there any other bloodstains besides the ones on the hood? None were detected. Don't you think it's strange? The victim died from a stab wound to the chest. 
In that case, there should have been bloodstains on the front of the raincoats. However, the only blood they found was on the hood. This is a huge contradiction. The wound on the victim's head is no ordinary wound. After all, the victim sustained this wound before she was stabbed in the chest. It does appear that way, doesn't it? The victims first suffered the head wound. If she had already been stabbed in the chest, the raincoat would have been stained with blood. Therefore, it is unthinkable that her chest was stabbed before she suffered the head wound. So the order of the wounds would be first the head followed by the chest. However, does that really change the situation? With this, a contradiction is born. One that overturns all of our assumptions up until now. Is the change really that great? I look forward to hearing it. Well then, this contradiction, why don't you show it to me? With evidence. Which piece of evidence shows the contradiction that arises from the order of the wounds? <laughs> this is the autopsy report written by Dr. Young. Well, um, wait, let me actually read it one more time. No, the candelabra. Head wound was post mortem. Really now. According to this, the head wound was post-mortem. But that's not what the raincoat shows! Exactly. It's the exact opposite. Bailiff, hurry and summon Dr. Bunny Young at once. Until we hear what she has to say, we cannot close the curtains on this case. Yes, ma'am. Understood. Oh, no, my God. I fucking... Uh. <laughs> Dr. Young is a busy person. It will take some time for her to arrive. In the meantime, let us try viewing this case from another angle. There's something that's been on my mind. One of the key figures in this case. The conductor. We still don't know who that person is. I'll let you mention it. Even after our investigation, we still have no idea who it is. The conductor has come up time and time again during this hearing. However, at this point in time, their identity remains a mystery. How about it? Do you have any ideas? I'm still not sure at the moment. However, there is someone I have in mind. A certain individual involved with this case who might know something about it. Who's that? Place the best. I demand your, your I demand your testimony. What? Don't say such a stupid thing. Why would you suspect Pops? Are you trying to cast suspicion towards the chairman of the PIC? Do you understand what that means? Status and prestige mean nothing before the truth. The man is trying to pin the crime on Kay. The evidence that was in Kay's possession, the ticket stub, the mask, the cassage. These items did not come into her possession out of her own volition. By some method, that man purposely planted them on her personage. It is hard to believe such a sudden accusation, but I'll ask just in case. Why would he do that? Obviously to direct suspicion towards Kay. I succeeded in... In drawing out those words from him, or from him earlier. Mr. Chairman, your response? Are you too shocked to speak? What of it? Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said, what of it? You, said you, you say that you drew out some words from me. But you don't have a shred of proof, you know. No one else heard it but you. It just doesn't work like that, you see. Or do you have something else, you know? Some kind of basis for your argument. His confidence. He also showed it at the cell. Prosecutor Edgeworth. I would like you to explain once more. 
I trust we have your permission, Mr. Chairman. Of course, I'm pretty interested in this matter myself, you know. I'd like to know just what part of me seems criminal to, to Edgeworth. There is no one as honest as I am, you see. Can I say that with a straight face? Let's start from the top. The fact that the auction was held in this room is a cause for suspicion. This is the PIC meeting room. I imagine it would be difficult for non-members to enter. That's why. All the members have key cards, you know? I think we can assume that multiple auctions have been held, her held here before. Therefore, suspecting a member of the PIC would be the best. Y yes, because the conductor has had to have been a PIC member. Wait, no! What? What was that all about? What do I do, Pops? I just help the enemy! Sebastian really is an idiot, you know. You see, Edgeworth, I'm not the only one with access, you know. Indeed, there are 11 members in the PIC. Even if we rule out the victim, Miss Crane, there are still 10 potential suspects. It's not me. But, but, but it, it couldn't be the ch chairman, right? I don't know who it is, but whoever, it's, whoever it is should just come forward. Yes, yes, everyone, just calm down, okay, you know? Edgeworth, is that all you got? Where's the evidence to suspect me? Oh, so you've fallen silent. You've gone too far, you see. I won't forgive you anymore. It's too late for regrets, you know. I'm a very important man, you see. Former chief prosecutor and chairman of the PIC. <laughs> It's fine if you're not prepared to face the fire, you know? Because, you see... Either way, it won't make any difference. Because I'm gonna bully you? <laughs> You've been rambling on for quite a while about the most trivial details, you know? Like that location of the murder, the order of the wounds, and... Hmm, what else was there? It just doesn't matter, you know? Because, you see, none of that means anything, you know? Think about it. We've got the suspect herself saying she killed the victim. That's all that matters, you see? She'll even get a lighter sentence with her confession, you know? Now then, if there are any contra contradictions, be my guest. How can, it be s How can that be considered a testimony? There must be a contradiction somewhere. Person. He's very important, isn't he? Mr. Edgeworth, it's alright. Let's just give up. Surely, I must have killed her. I can't even remember it. Don't be tied down by your muddled memories. If you want to believe in something, believe in your own innocence. Believe in me, who believes in you. The opponent is the PIC chairman. Taking him down won't be easy. However, he has underestimated me. If I can take advantage of that. Yeah, they just fr flip the sprites. They don't actually like make the other side. They just flip it. So that's why like some some sprites look rather weird when they flip. <laughs> Maybe true she confessed. However, that does not make it the truth. She is suffering from memory loss, so we must we must question the credibility of her testimony. Objection. Yeah, I'm not fucking making that. Even if you say that, you know, I still won't solve anything. What good will it do to deny her confession? Sounds like nonsense to me. Wanna try asking her again? I think she'll just say that she she's the murderer again, though. Very well. Let's try asking her again one last time. I'd like to hear from Kay herself, whether or not she is the culprit. Huh? From me? Will that be alright? If this goes poorly, it will be quite unfavorable for you. I do not mind, however. I shall ask Kay the question myself. 
move the tears, you know. Uh, touching, you know. Uh, very touching. Fine then, I'll let you ask her. However, I have one condition. If all this proves to be a waste of time, And that will be the end of it. How's that sound? The end? Of the hearing? Yes, yes. It seems you can be smart once in a while, Sebastian. In other words, you see, if she confesses again, K. Faraday will be found beyond a shadow of a doubt. Guilty. Yep, it's a fine idea. Guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, that's right. That's harsh, but either way, if I do nothing, she'll be declared guilty. Okay. Yes. I know what I'm asking of you is unreasonable, but please, I want you to answer me. It doesn't matter how tiny it is. Do you... Do you remember anything? Anything that would prove your innocence? Why? Why would you go that far? For me? I... I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm too scared to remember. Because I might have done something even worse. If that were that case, I would only make things worse for you and Mr. Edgeworth. K. Faraday must have been a despicable criminal. Someone who betrayed your trust. Don't worry. We've only known each other for a short while. But I know you very well. I'd even say that I know you better than yourself, now that you've lost your memories. You cannot possibly be the culprit, because your true identity is... Take that! The Great Thief Yatagarasu. The Yatagarasu is a noble thief who would never stoop to murder. No, it's useless! After all... No matter what that memories no matter what that memory still remains. This image that's stuck in my head. I just can't get rid of it. That means I must have There's no clear evidence to prove that you're the culprit, besides your own confession. Remember what I said. You must believe in yourself. Or perhaps you cannot trust my words. No, that's not it. It's because you are trying to save someone like me. You've already lost so much. All for my sake. I can't bear it anymore. Please. Please just give up. I see now. I thought it was strange. The reason you were acting like you wanted to be found guilty was because you were concerned about me. That is just like you, Kay. It's because... You're a good person, Mr. Edgeworth. Unfortunately, I may fall short of your expectations. I am not trying to be a good person. No matter how much you may want me to give up, I'll keep trying to save you. That is the nature of who I am. Whether or not it is a burden for you is none of my concern. Okay, believe in yourself once more. You are a noble great thief. What you should be doubting is your, is, the, is your memory of committing the murder. This is my wish, above all else. Please. I... <laughs> Kay! What is it? Did you remember something? If she remembers something... Now, <laughs> it'd be like a bad movie. Bull. Bull? Prosecutor Edgeworth, please ask her to clarify. Um, well, Kay, what do you mean by bull? I remember now. This is fucking bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Remember now, the person in the red raincoat had that with her. The stuffed toy bull. 
The stuffed bull doll. Where did I get toy from? I don't know. I'm certain of it. Is that true? Is that true, defendant? Yes, your honor. The court hereby accepts the defendant's statement as a new piece of testimony. Courtney is full of bull. <laughs> We're messing around, Courtney. A testimony like that can't be accepted, you know. Your objection has been noted, sir. However, testimony about the victim's belongings has been lacking up until now. Objection. Nevertheless, you know, her vague memories cannot be trusted, you know. Her memories are vague, and that would be bad for us as well. Didn't you say this earlier yourself, Mr. Chairman? Courtney! She really just... Whoop! Bit you thought! <laughs> Since we have the suspect's confession, we don't need to worry about the trivial details. If we decide to doubt her memories, then we must also doubt her confession, which is the main foundation of her case. Courtney! Courtney! <laughs> she woke up and didn't choose violence for once. For once in her life. Oh my god, so proud of you, girl. Like, but yeah, let's fucking go. Are you willing to do that, sir? Uh, you're right. Well, never mind then. I shall leave it to you. Thank you very much. We did it. It was touch and go for a while there, though. However, I was words of Judge Courtney just now. It almost feels as if she's on our side. Prosecutor Edgeworth, do you know anything about this stuffed animal? The stuffed animal Kay spoke of must have been this. You found it in the storeroom. It is believed to be one of the items for the auction. This is... Hmm? Do you know something about it, Justine? N no. It's just a bit different from what I imagined. Indeed. It's certainly not what I would have expected the victim to be carrying. Let's examine every suspicious looking looking cranny. Cool. Yes. The right horn seems to be fine. The entire balance feels a bit off. This horn... It looks like you can move it. What? What was that buzzing sound? It seems this toy is equipped with a recording device. And... I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. Silence, huh? I've been waiting for my chance to get revenge all this time. Is this... the moment of the murder? Who could have recorded something like this? The, this is... There ain't no doubt about it. This here was what I heard. We cannot verify when these voices were recorded. Okay, that's fair, I guess. It's also possible they aren't related to the case at all. If only we had some video as well. That's hogwash, I'm telling you. That right there was the conversation that I heard. And the victim was holding on to it, right? I reckon that must have been recorded when she got attacked. That certainly is a possibility. However, your testimony alone is insufficient. I require something with a little more credibility. Again, her words. It almost sounds as if she's trying to give me an advice. Judge Courtney, there's no mistake that those voices were from the incident. Please recall the audio that was recorded by the stuffed animal. I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. If we compare this part of the recording with a certain piece of evidence, we can prove it. Yes. Recording took place during the moment of crime. Autopsy report. The autopsy report? And exactly what part of the autopsy report shows that?
Oh, I mean, I know, but like, uh, is it like... Burn mark, okay. I remember clearly what, what that voice said. You can't hide that burn from me. On the victim's hand, there was a burn mark. Indeed, it just happened to match up, you see. What of it? According to Kay's testimony, the victim had been holding that stuffed animal. And it just happened to record a characteristic of the victim, namely, the burn. That's just a coincidence. I mean, it could happen, right? Neither of us can fucking word today. I do not think so. It is hard to believe that all of this is simply a coincidence. The voices on the stuffed animal were most likely recorded during the incident. One of these voices must belong to the true culprit. From what we've heard, it must have been the one who was doing most of the, most of the talking. And what's the point? In the end, we still can't tell their gender or identity, you know? Indeed, because they had been using voice changers. It can't be helped. It seems the situation has become quite clear. The conversation Miss Hart over overheard was between the culprit and Miss Crane. That's what I've been telling you from the start. And from this, we will understand a new fact. Please enlighten us then. I trust you have no objections, Mr. Chairman. And what you want? According to Miss Hart's testimony, just before the incident, two people came up from the auction hall using the lift. It must have been the conductor and one of the auction guests. They probably went there to settle the payment after winning a bid. And then, it was there that the crime was carried out. Since the auction continued after the crime took place, we are led to a single truth. This is the new fact that we have arrived at. Uh, the culprit is a conductor. Since the conductor was the only one who could keep the auction going, we can conclude that the, that the deceased victim could not have been the conductor. Um, Justine? Please be quiet here, okay? If the conductor was not the victim, then they must have been the culprit. Please wait, that alone is insufficient. Of course, even I do not intend to rely up only upon the process of elimination. Certain traces left at the crime scene led me to believe that the culprit is the conductor. Well then, please show it to us. What were the traces left at the crime scene that led me to introduce the culprit as the conductor? The culprit purposely left a large amount of blood in the meeting room. In doing so, we are led to believe the meeting room had been the scene of the crime. It was a ruse by the true culprit to hide the blood that had fallen from the storeroom. So we wouldn't find out about the existence of the black market auction, correct? Indeed. The culprit had been unrelated to the auction, and there would have been no need to do such a thing. Ergo, the culprit could have only have been the could have only been the conductor. Well then, do you have any idea as to who the conductor might possibly be? The auction hall is at the PIC meeting room. And furthermore, there was a storeroom above it. The conductor must have been, at the very least, a member of the PIC. So, in other words, you suspect me, I take it. Isn't it natural to suspect you, the one with the most authority in the PIC? Objection. You're quite capable. I'll give you that much, at least. Well, you know, like I said before, you're far too naive. You have nothing, you know. There is no evidence that proves I'm the culprit, you see. If by some chance you do have evidence, then why don't you present it? <laughs> do I have evidence that plays the culprit? I don't have it. Blaze himself has suggested that he is the criminal. 
He's been showing that strange self-confidence for a while now. He knows that there is not a single piece of evidence left behind to incriminate him. <laughs> if you play with fire, you're gonna get burned, Edgeworth. Just kidding. I always wanted to say that, you know. Well then, Courtney. I, I, I reckon. I just remember something, too. What? You also lost your memories? Nah, that ain't it. Something just popped into my head right now. Very well. Please tell us. Objection. Courtney, could you tell me what you're doing? Prosecutor Edgeworth will not give up until we have destroyed every last possibility. I am destroying every possibility so that he will never oppose us again. Justine, I don't really know what's going on, but well said. Pops, I'm gonna help too. After all, he is the one who's wrong. Fine then. Let's hear what he has to what she has to say. Well then, Miss Hart, please proceed. Sh sure thing. Just leave it to me. Please make sure you only tell the truth. Ain't that a matter, of course. I'm a bona fide journalist of justice, you know. Somehow I feel uneasy. Y'all saying the culprit was a conductor, right? Means the victim was a customer. Now here's where it gets a mad strange, you see. There were 11 people at the auction. And the auction continued after the incident. I went straight on over and snuck a peek down below. You don't mean? That's exactly what I mean. All 11 people were still there. Present, present and accounted for. What? Are you sure about that? Sure, I'm sure. I saw it with my own two eyes. Um, so it started with 11 people, and there were still 11 people after the murder. <laughs> Was it a ghost? You know, Sebastian, normally a prosecutor would call that a contradiction, you know. Where there are really no changes in, in the auction at all. Really, I'm telling you. The auction just went on like normal. Ah, but there was one itty bitty thing though. What was it? You know those hammers you always see at an auction? Like the one that lady is using over there? An auction gavel, perhaps? Yup, that's the one. All of a sudden, I couldn't hear the sound no more. We'd have been banging away just prior to it. The sound of the gavel. Does that have anything to do with the case? If Miss Hart's testimony is the truth, then this matter has taken a grave turn. If the victim was neither the conductor nor a customer, the very foundation of Prosecutor Edgeworth's reasoning would collapse. <laughs> Justice prevails, as they say. I hope you've learned your lesson, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, there really is nothing we can do. It's not over yet. Some mysteries still remain. We have to think. If I don't, then Kay will be... Did you get the answer you wanted this time? Well then, a deal's a deal. Please wait, Mr. Chairman. I believe it is still too early to make a judgment. Courtney! Courtney be flirting with us, though, like... There are still a few mysteries left in this case. Until we have solved them all, we cannot call this a complete victory. Isn't that right, Prosecutor Edgeworth? I was expecting you to shout, Hold it! Like you always do. Yes, of course. Once again, Judge Courtney has come to my aid. Well then, what is it? What sort of mysteries are left? Well, of course. There's the contradiction in the autopsy report. That kind of thing. I brought her in. What's wrong? Why were we suddenly called here? Did someone suddenly get sick? I I'll begin preparing a compress that. 
Ouch! What do you call me here for? Did something happen? Dr. Young, Miss Jensen, you have my gratitude for taking the trouble to come here. This won't take long, so please relax. Tell me what in place this is going on! <laughs> of course, we called you here because something came up. Judge Courtney, just what are you planning? Bonnie Young, under the divine rule of law, please answer truthfully. There were no mistakes in your autopsy report, correct? Granny would never make a mistake. That's certainly strange. Huh? What's strange? This court has found an error in Dr. Young's autopsy report. Dr. Young, please tell the truth. Did you falsify the autopsy report? That's terrible. How can you accuse her of that? I have no idea what you are talking about. Why would I do such a thing in the first place? To protect the true culprit, of course. What you talking about? I would never do such a thing. How strange. In that case, why would there be an error in the autopsy report, I wonder? Prosecutor Edgeworth. What do you think? Oh, I expected you to press into her statement like you normally do. Why is she taking control of the situation and trying to help me? I don't know what her goal is, but I must play along. If the autopsy report you gave to Sebastian have been authentic, then the error should not have been there. But wait a minute! I didn't do anything! That is what we will figure out from this point on. Firstly, Dr. Young, I'd like to hear your testimony. Why do you want to hear her testimony? It will be pointless. I will be the one who decides whether or not it, it is pointless, not you. There are, no pa there are patients waiting for us. But, but Granny, ouch! Anyways, we don't have time for this. Is there any way I could convince you? This is of the utmost importance. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, Granny says she'll testify. So please, try to finish this quickly. If we don't return soon, there will be people in terrible suffering. By the way, um, that old granny, uh, she is uh, the uh, director of the... Uh... Hold on. Of the Dai Young Hospital. <laughs> So now we know of at least... <laughs> that is not a very reassuring name. I know, right? And so now we know of at least two hospitals, right? Actually, we know of three. Because it's a uh, hottie clinic. And it's like the, the hospital that's next, like, right nearby. And then there is also Dai Yang. <laughs> Interesting. And the one that's next to hottie clinic. Mm hmm If we don't return soon, there will be people in terrible suffering. And yet, you were lollygagging about the viewing platform earlier. I promise you, this won't take long. Only if she tells me the truth, of course. No, it's not die as in to die. It's as like as in to, to as in like die as in uh color there are no mistakes in granny's autopsy reports i've been working with corpses longer than you have been alive there's no way i'd make a mistake in writing the autopsy report ouch i got nothing to gain from falsifying the autopsy report that's what she says see there's nothing strange at all Yes, yes, that's right, you know. There was no way she would falsify it, you see. Under the name of the goddess of law, do you swear that this testimony is the truth? Of course, and Granny would never tell a lie. You were asking Dr. Young. We do not need to hear from a third party. 
Yeah, of the Dai Young. <laughs> Director of the Dai Young Hospital. Uh. I'm not a third party. I'm on Granny's side. If you raise an objection to my testimony, you'd best prepare yourself. You ex-prosecutor. Prosecutor. I will definitely expose the contradiction in the autopsy, autopsy report. The victim wore this raincoat after suffering a blow to the head. And yet, there was not a single drop of blood on the front of the raincoats. Therefore, it is impossible for the head wound to have been post-mortem. Um, well, that's... Ouch! I don't need you to tell me that. That's what I wrote down from the very beginning. The autopsy report says the head wound was post-mortem. That's completely different. Uh, yeah. I relate to Car Karen what to put down in the autopsy report. After that, it was none of my beeswax. Relate to Karen. Please elaborate on that. Dr. Young, please confirm what this autopsy report says with your own eyes. Oh, I'll read it out for you. Ouch. This autopsy report wasn't written by me. What? What do you mean? I don't know. But Granny, I, I can't say that. Miss Jensen, if you are trying to keep the truth in the dark, then... In place of the goddess of law, I shall hear your confession. Judge Courtney is talking with Dr. Young in private. What? Is that true? Understood. I shall convey your words to everyone else, Dr. Young. I have properly relayed the autopsy report orally to that child. It seems my granddaughter must have mucked it up when she was writing it down. Wow! She mimicked her voice perfectly. What? There was no need for her to go that far, though. In other words, the contents of the autopsy report has been had been falsified. By your hand, Miss Jensen. Oh, uh, I... With that, we've proven that the wound on her head came first, followed by her chest wound. Miss Jensen, why did you falsify the autopsy report? Hold on a second. She never said she falsified it, you know. She just made a teeny tiny mistake when she wrote it down. Postmortem and antemortem sound kind of similar, you know. No. Oh. They are complete opposites. That is the very definition of falsification. Miss Jensen, why would you lie? Okay, ouch. I want you to tell me too. Why would you what why you would do something like that? Granny, but I Because you falsified the autopsy report, Kay fell under suspicion. Tell me why you did it. I, I, I can't say. I just can't say it. Not I don't want to say, but I can't say. You're all a bunch of bullies, you know. Getting up on this poor girl who loves her grandmother so... She's so the unrelated to this. I think we can forgive her for, for one tiny mistake. I won't do. Aren't there... Aren't you the one with the most to lose if she testifies? Hmm? What are you saying? You see, as a former prosecutor, you'll have to speak a little more clearly, you know. Very well, as you wish. I shall answer clearly. Miss Jensen played an essential role in this case. Accomplice. Miss Jensen falsified the autopsy report in order to assist the true culprit. Uh, ow! 
Ouch! <laughs> this girl is an accomplice. What's your basis for that claim? It was impossible for a single person to commit this crime in the first place. The crime could not have been committed without at least two people. Namely because... The number of people wouldn't match. If the conductor was the culprit, and one of the auction guests was the victim, it would contradict the witness's testimony that there were 11 people after the incident. Well now, you got a problem with my testimony? Not at all. For once. For once. Rather, it is because I believe your testimony. That's why I, why an accomplice must exist. So you still won't, won't admit that your reasoning is wrong. Up until now, we had not even considered the possibility of an accomplice. However, if there had been an accomplice, it changes the entire story completely. If the accomplice took the murdered auctions, auction guest's place, then the number of people remains 11. Ooh, I see now. So that's what you're thinking. You know, wouldn't that have been quickly discovered? Miss Jensen and the victim have similar physiques. If she wore the victim's mask, she could have easily taken her place. Miss Jensen, did you switch places with the victim? I... I... I wouldn't... Who was the conductor? In other words, tell me who was the true culprit. I can't... I mean, that would also cause trouble for Granny. Uh, ouch! But Granny... Well, accept whatever wrongs you may have done. Just tell me everything. As I thought, it appears you really were the accomplice. Miss Jensen, I... Miss Jensen... Would you please tell us? Yes. It's okay, Granny. Fine now. I switched places with the victim, Miss Crane. So you admit to being the conductor's accomplice? Yes. I helped out the conductor. I don't really know why, but for some reason... The conductor was expecting to be attacked by Miss Crane. The conductor expected an attack from the victim. They were so sure it was going to happen that they came up with a plan to counter it. A way to beat the victim at their own, at her own game. And that's when I was called in. I was told to wait in the storeroom before the auction began. Whoa there! You ain't fooling my eyes! If you were waiting in the storeroom, I reckon I would have bumped into you. After all, I've been up in that storeroom the entire auction. I'm telling the truth. Wonder about that, you know? Can we really believe a girl who would falsify a report? Heh, <laughs> there should have been many places to hide in that storeroom. And by all means, tell me, where did our little nurse hide? The place in the storeroom where Mrs. Jensen hid was costume trunk. She hid inside the costume trunk. A costume trunk, huh? Ah, now that you mention it, that box was already there before I snuck in. I figured I would hide in there myself, but it was wrapped up nice and tight with the chain. And it was locked too, so I had to give it up. I suspect that when you sneaked into the room, Miss Jensen was already inside the trunk. Yes, it would have been bad if one of the guests from the auction had opened the lid. They were instructing me to hide inside. The conductor wrapped a chain around the costume trunk. I think they went downstairs using the lift shortly after thereafter. It was right at before the auction. So then, when the auction began, only you and Miss Hart were in the storeroom. Yes, that, that should be right. The auction had been going on as usual, but when a certain participant made the winning bid, the conductor committed the crime. Miss Hart must have heard heard the altercation that occurred then. You betcha. I was trembling behind that, that there statue the whole time, though. Following the altercation, Jill Crane was murdered. After killing Jill Crane, the conductor carried her body to the costume trunk. 
and Miss Jensen, who had been hiding in the trunk, was made to take Miss Crane's place. The victim's body was placed inside the costume trunk. The conductor then took Miss Jensen, who had been made to look like Jill Crane, and returned to the auction hall as if nothing had happened. Was this roughly what happened in the storeroom during the incident? Yes, that's right. Holding the old switcheroo with one of the auction guests. Ain't that impossible? That gal and the murder victim are two completely different people, you know. Believe me, it's it's fine. I'm like struggling myself. I'm like trying to like keep track of what's happening. Don't you reckon one of the other participants would have noticed that and caused a wreck ruckus? No, not at all. The reason they didn't notice the switch was because... She stole the victim's clothes. From what I can tell, Miss Jensen and the victim appeared to have a similar physique. Furthermore, there was a rule requiring a mask to be worn during the auction. And if their clothes were the same, I doubt anyone would have noticed she was a different person. Yes, I blended right in. I borrowed Mr. Crane's clothes and- Ouch! You mustn't embarrass the dead like that. I know, I also thought it was pretty heartless to leave her exposed like that. So when the conductor wasn't looking, I covered her up in the raincoat that was up for auction. So she was the one who put the red raincoats on the victim. And then, the auction resumed as if nothing had happened. I reckon I took the picture of her in the red raincoat after that. Better make all the facts line up. After I took the photo, I went over to the lift to sneak a peek down below. I witnessed the 11 participants and then I hightailed it back behind the statue. Don't tell me, you were hiding there the entire time until we found you. Ah, uh, that's... How should I put it? What is it? Did something happen? I didn't mention it before, but after that I might have dozed off a little. To be more precise, I fainted? Well, something like that. S something did happen. It ain't no big deal. Kinda embarrassing to say, though. There was this huge thump sound, and all of a sudden, I was a little surprised by that. It was right after I had just witnessed the murder, so I was shaking in my boots. My heart sort of tightened up. Now it was off to La La Land. When I woke up, it was already the next day, around the time y'all came by the so storeroom. I see, so there was a large sound. Miss Hart, I take it you do not know what transpired in the storeroom beyond the this point. I, I guess. But after the auction, all the masks were properly returned. So I reckon the participants had exited through the storeroom, just like Adon said. Hmm. Miss Jensen. What were your actions after the auction resumed? I took the victim's place and participated in the auction. The conductor instructed me to win the bid for the costume trunk. Because the body was inside it. It would have been bad for if another auction guest had won, won the bid for it. I didn't realize the box was empty. No, we only found out when I came up to the storeroom to pay the bill. The conductor was with me and told me to go search for her immediately. And then, I found another girl, collapsed in front of the ladder. Okay. Yes, she probably fell down from the roof and lost consciousness. Maybe the victim left the hatch open when she went up to the rooftop. I understand now. Kay was surprised at seeing the collapsed victim and did not notice the open hatch. She must have missed her footing and fell down into the storeroom. Miss Hart, I have determined the sound that made you faint. It was likely the sound of Kay falling into, onto the storeroom floor. That might have been it. I reckon it'd be kind of pathetic to faint over something like that. When Miss Jensen found the unconscious Kay. Miss Hart was also unconscious behind the statue. The situation is becoming clearer to me. Miss Jensen, please continue your story. After I found Kay and the victim, I put both of them in the trunk. If the customers at the, at the auction found out, there would have been a huge commotion. Was this an order from the conductor as well? Yes, it was. 
But since I secretly decided to put the raincoat on Miss Crane, I had to dispose of the raincoat without the conductor's noticing. <laughs> so the conductor didn't anticipate the raincoat becoming another piece of evidence. And finally, he dressed Miss Crane in the spare conductor's outfit. I see. In doing so, he made the victim appear as if she was the, the conductor. In the end, the auction ended without anyone noticing anything. Hmm. Miss Jensen, your crimes have become clear. If you know anything else, please hold nothing back. I want to help you more. That's all I know. Um, if I had to say, there is just one thing that bothers me. When I took Miss Crane's place, I borrowed her clothes. And there was no way for me to borrow her hair. Ouch! What kind of coroner's assistant goes around stealing, stealing the corpse's hair? I think that robbing the deceased of their clothes would be questionable enough. Well, the color and the length of her hair is different, so I was worried about how to disguise it. However, the conductor even had a wig prepared for me. In fact, he had two of them. Inside the costume trunk, there was both a straight wig and a wavy wig. Two wigs. Why were there two? Who knows? Maybe it was a precaution, in case the victim had changed her hairstyle? I ended up using the straight wig to match Miss Crane's hair. So that means the wavy, wavy wig was left unused. Is that really all you know? Yes. Yep, that's really all I know. So that means you don't know who the conductor is. I'm sorry, I only knew that person as the auction conductor. I never saw that person without a mask on. The conductor seemed to be on guard towards everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this rate. <laughs> Edgeworth, is that all you got? Even if that little nurse is an accomplice, it changes absolutely nothing, you know? In the end, the true culprit is still K Faraday. All you did was add another criminal, you know? The rule of law cannot be overturned, at least not for your sake. Is this as far as I go? Am I unable to save K? I mean, that seems like the most likely at the at the point, right? Like at this point, it seems that Blaze being the conductor is the most likely. Uh, Francisca, why are you here? Didn't I tell you, Miles Edgeworth? Wherever there is a case, I will follow. Prosecutor Von Karma, your hard work is most appreciated. However, don't get the wrong idea. I only came here to find out the truth behind what happened to Kay Faraday. I don't plan on forgiving you for abandoning the prosecutor's path. Understand. You should thank your former subordinate. He gave me some valuable information which may save Kay Faraday. Detective Gumshoe did. Listen well, Miles Edgeworth. This will be the final piece of evidence. Jill Crane suffered the wound on her head first. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Francesca, really. <laughs> we knew that, though. Well, someone say something! Hmm, um, well, I hate to say it, but you already proved that. Already proved? Yes, well, just a few minutes ago. You should have told me sooner! You're the one who barged in here and started talking. Well then, does that mean you found out what the murder weapon was already? No, not yet. Hmm. Is that so? In that case, listen well. The victim was struck on the head with a blunt cylindrical object. The wound on her chest was suffered post-mortem. Cylindrical murder weapon. Objection. You know, this report of yours. I trust it's accurate, of course. These were the results of two independent autopsies carried out by two respected doctors. Objection. It's reassuring. 
But it's too bad. You have no right to investigate this kid. Interpol is after the is after the black market auctions, and I'm the prosecutor in charge of this investigation. The victim participated in the auction. Therefore, it is only natural for me to investigate. Especially now that she's been murdered. I see, I see. Clever girl, little von Karma. Then it has been settled. The victim died from blunt force trauma to the head. Unfortunately, the murder weapon has yet to be found. Huh. Just knowing the shape of the murder weapon gives me an idea as to what it might be. <laughs> In my investigation, we didn't find any other murder weapons, you know? If you consider the conductor's processions and the crime scene, the answer should be clear. The blunt cylindrical object used in the auction hall was... An auction gavel. <laughs> it was something that the conductor had in their hand during the auction. Namely, an auction gavel. An auction gavel? We didn't find anything like that. If the culprit is the conductor, it is possible that the gavel may be the murder weapon. However, that alone is not reason enough. Wouldn't you agree? Of course, I have proof to back it up. This piece of evidence proved that the murder weapon is the auction gavel. Oh, it's... Lada, 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 lada. According to Miss Hart's testimony, after the victim had been murdered, it seems she suddenly stopped hearing the sound of the gavel during the auction. However, she had been able to hear it up until then. Why was that, you ask? Yo, the next fucking chapter is not very long! Let's fucking go! It was because it had been used as a murder weapon and was covered in the victim's blood. Who is the nun? It's Kay! Who is the nun? <laughs> Who is the nun in the evidence? <laughs> it looked like a nun, but I see it. I totally see what you mean. It was because it had been used as a murder weapon and was covered in the victim's blood. It became necessary to dispose of it. Isn't that right? Blaze the best. I'll have a search for the murder weapon performed immediately. <laughs> well, good luck with that, you know. You gotta work as hard as you can while you're young, you see? He's completely confident that we won't find it. Well then, while the search for the murder weapon continues, I hereby call for a brief recess. Sweet! Oh my god. Yes, yeah, last chapter. Order in the court. Prosecutor von Karma, your report, please. I have... I have bad news. We have searched every inch of the Grand Tower, but the auction gavel was nowhere to be found. <laughs> that is most unfortunate. It seems I am left with no choice but to pronounce a verdict. Well, it sure seems that way, you know. Normally, you wouldn't commit a blunder like leaving behind the murder, murder weapon, you know. The best criminals would never do something like that, you see. <laughs> don't have enough information. Is this as far as I can go? Yes, yes. It's a shame, you know. It can't be helped, you see. This takes me back, you know. All those defendants who came to me asking for a plea bargain. They trusted me, you know. Told me every one of their li dirty little secrets, you see. And when it came time for the trial... I get them sentenced to life of prison. They... 
They're all completely dumbstruck, you know? Each and every one of them. <laughs> oh, how I wish you could have seen it, you know? That stupid look on their faces. I shall hereby announce my verdict. Please humbly accept the words of the law. There's nothing more I can do. With this, both Kay and I are... If only we had some evidence! I never thought that I would be passing judgment on you like this. This is the end. The defendant... Plays the best. I hereby indict you. Oh, Courtney! Courtney! <laughs> hey, remember when I said that I hated you? Yeah, I take all that back, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Oh. It's gotten into you all of a sudden. I have here documents regarding a certain case. Oh, I like that suddenly now she is like flipped sides. The IS-7 incident, a case that happened 18 years ago. Documents, you say? Why would you suddenly... Wait, you don't mean... On the day of the crime, the record of your keycard being used was because... I came to this room to fetch these documents, of course. Although, when I enter the meeting room... It seems it was before the black market auction had begun. At first, I told you that I came to gather documents about you, pr pros Prosecutor Edgeworth. At that time, I simply could not tell you the truth. What are you doing, Disney? Why are you inviting Pops? We'll get over it, it's fine. Yeah, this is the- this is- well, You see what I mean? Like, every single one of them are fucking connected. And fucking wait until the last one, it's insanity. Remarks there are no clues for aware about the Dover son of Gustavison, who until the day before the incident regularly visited Mr. Manchin's mansion. Mm -mm. I see. How is this gonna help me? Without any base, this is slander! That was a wonderful remark, Sastian. Look, he is he's getting better. He just... Yes! I'm pretty sure they mentioned that. In the last episode, too. That was a wonderful remark, Sebastian. Huh? Really? Of course there is a basis. During the case 18 years ago... Please adopt him. Prosecutor Manfred von Karma fabricated information regarding the body. That was because the body of the sculptor, Isaac Dover, had been stolen. Papa fabricated information about a body? What do you mean? Detective Laser, who handled the initial investigation, reported that the body had gone missing. However, in order to deceive Prosecutor von Karma, there was a person who purposely did not report to him that the body had disappeared. What? Oh, oh, oh wait, 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 wait. It doesn't say, right? No, it doesn't say. So does that mean that Blaze was that detective that didn't tell Von Karma that they couldn't find the body? What did you say? That person would not forgive those who defied him, nor would he allow others to hold power. He would use any means necessary in order to bend others to his will. And then, also 18 years ago, Director Young 
was ordered by a certain individual to write a fake autopsy report. Dr. Young was the one who wrote the autopsy report for the IS-7 incident. Please wait! Granny didn't do anything wrong! She was ordered by that person! She had no choice but to obey! That person? That person was the chief prosecutor at the time. The chief prosecutor, 18 years ago. You don't mean... The chief prosecutor who gave Papa his first penalty! It was none other than you, Blaze the Best! Objection. What are you saying? Pops would never do something like that! Because it wasn't, the, it wasn't the detective. He was just the one who was like... Controlling everyone else, pretty much. Sebastian, we do not need your opinion right now. Blaze the Best! Do you have a rebuttal? Fabricating stuff about the body, Von Karma did all that on his own, you know? Falsifying the autopsy report. Young. You would actually do something like that? Man, you, you really did some terrible things behind my back, you know? Seeing as how all the parties concerned are here today, we should ask them directly. But please wait! Granny's- ouch! Granny, I am sorry. I, I knew that. That's why I- Yep, because if I didn't, he said he would expose you. If I didn't assist in the crime, Granny would be prosecuted. That's what that man, the conductor, told me. Up until now, she has referred to the, the conductor as like, Singular they, I'm pretty sure. So Miss Jensen was being threatened. It was the conductor who threatened you, Blaze the Best. That's... I don't know. The person who threatened me was the auction conductor. I do have similar physiques, but I never saw the person's face. And a trivial thing is fine. Give us a give us a characteristic, though it could be a clue. Th that's right, the conductor's mask. It exposed just a tiny part of his face. There was a tattoo there. There, I'm sure of it. A facial tattoo. Interesting. A tattoo, you say? Objection. I really have no idea what you're talking about. You know. As you can see, there are clearly no tattoos on my face, you see. So that person doesn't match me at all, you know. The person who threatened her. The so-called conductor. I wonder who it is, you know. <laughs> you have incurred the wrath of the goddess of law. I suggest you watch what you say. Hasn't he... Hasn't he incurred your wrath, your own wrath, rather than the wrath of the goddess? Jill Crane had been pursuing you, just as I have. And I will not let her death be in vain. Crane was, you know, you say she was pursuing me. I, my, I didn't really know her that well, you know. I don't mind girls chasing after me, you know, but I don't recall her ever falling for me, you see. You didn't know the victim well. That is a testimony we haven't heard up until now. Before the eyes of the goddess of law, you shall give us an official testimony. I see, I see. Everything, everyone is bullying me. If you're gonna go that far, that's fine, you see. I'll just have to make you disappear. Every last one of you. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall cooperate with you as well. That that pose is so confusing because it looks like whoever is like to his right has like their arm wrapped around his arm. 
and it looks like it's her arm and it's just so weird it looks so weird if we let this opportunity slip by i doubt we will ever get him to stand in court again oh they're bonding please do not let this chance go to waste probably hold it together yes i promise i will live up to your expectations now then, blaze the best. You shall testify regarding the victim. The victim, Jill Crane, was a member of the Prosecutorial Investi Investigation Committee, you see. Uh, personally, I didn't really know her that well, you know. Either way, it's not like I had a motive to murder her, you know. I have no idea why she was pursuing me, you see. You intend to deny your guilt until the bitter end, don't you? Of course he does. There's no way Pops could be the criminal. I mean, he's my Pops, you know. He's the very best, like no one ever was. <laughs> the, the translators did a fucking fantastic job on this. Like... Oh my god. Your dad, Ash? Oh god, I fucking hope not. I hope not. Yes, yes, Sebastian. If you're gonna stick up for me, be sure to have a clear basis, you know. Alright, I got it. I'll clear you out these false accusations, Pops. Oh, sorry, that just made me like think of like the names in like Spirit of Justice because they're just ridiculous. I I'm not gonna like say anything else, but like their names fucking ridiculous. Like you think like their punny names now are bad? It gets so much worse. <laughs> I'll clear you of these false accusations, Pops. Believe in you, Pops. You won't lose to someone like Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, yes. You really are pure, you know. A person. He really loves his father, doesn't he? However, one must be able to accept the mistakes of the father. No matter how much they may look up to him. Each person must atone for their crimes, no matter who they are. This is going to be hard for Sebastian, but I simply cannot overlook his father's crimes. Of course she's saying that from experience. So you're saying that you weren't very familiar with the victim? That's right. I didn't even know about the burn mark on Queen's hand, you see. You didn't know about the burn mark. W well, you see, even if I had gotten close to her, she, she would have disappeared soon. It's a pain to remember someone, you know? When they're just gonna disappear, you see? In other words, anyone who defies him disappears. I would like you to add that to your statement. To add your statement about the victim's burnt here testimony. I only just learned that you had the burn mark on your hand. So you're... You're saying that you didn't know about the victim's burn. Is that really the truth? You really are persistent, you know? You really think I would pay attention to every little wound on a woman's hand? I would think the burn mark on the victim's hand would be hard to miss. Now that you mention it... Jill Crane would regularly wear gloves. I too did not know about the burn until the incident occurred. Jill Crane regularly wore gloves. I thought so. She was probably trying to hide the burn mark, you see. I understand how sensitive a woman can be without th these things, you know. I would like you to add your so-called sensitive understanding of a woman to your, t to your testimony. Maybe she was always wearing gloves in order to hi hide the burn mark, you know? Objection! Jill Crane regularly wore gloves. If that is true, then it creates a huge contradiction. Oh, a huge contradiction, you say? I would like you to listen to the voice recorded on this stuffed animal one more time.
And we were right away. Can't hide that burn from me. Silence, huh? I've been waiting for my chance to get revenge all this time. Uh. We were under the impression that this was the moment when the victim was murdered. I knew who you were right away. Can't hide that burn from me. We thought that this statement was said by the culprit. Isn't that fine? It was a problem, you know? Huh. There was a huge problem with that. If the victim had been wearing gloves from the start, it would have been impossible to see the burn on her hand. Objection. Gloves come off very easily, you know? She could have taken them off during the auction. That's... That's not true! Miss Crane had been wearing her gloves when I took her place. She must have been wearing them before before she was murdered. What are you saying? You... Don't you understand the position you're in? I, I... I'm not scared anymore. I have Granny here with me. Lace, your day of reckoning has finally come. Somehow, it seems like you all want to disappear. Permanently. The only one who will be disappearing here is you. Place the best. Hey, how dare you say that to Pops? Does it really matter if the burn mark, mark was visible or not? It certainly does matter. If the burn mark was visible, then we'd have a complete turnabout of the situation. What? What are you saying? If the victim's burn mark wasn't visible, what exactly does that tell you? The culprit also had a burn mark. Are you... are you following? Sebastian, turn your way of thinking around. If the victim was wearing gloves, then her burn mark could not have been seen. In that case, whose burn mark was seen? Someone else's burn mark? Precisely. The culprit must have had a burn mark as well. In other words... I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. The person who said this was not the culprit, but the victim. I, I get what you mean. What? What? Objection. Sebastian, could you please step aside? Edgeworth, all your reasoning up until now has been was just a figment of your imagination, you know? The culprit had a burn mark? Where was it, you know? If you can't answer that, then your logic doesn't hold up, you know? Where was the culprit's burn mark? I wonder where the burn mark could have been. During the auction, wasn't everyone wearing a disguise? Indeed, during the auction, everyone should have been dressed in a particular way. If the burn mark was still visible under those conditions, then... Now, now. Why don't you show us? And where was the culprit's burn? You'll have to show me the proof, you see. Take that! It was what the conductor was wearing during the auction. Now you're picking up what's, what they're putting down. In other words, the outfit you were wearing at the time. What can you figure out from the clothes alone? The conductor had been wearing a white suit, white gloves, and a mask. His, his attire had covered up most of his skin. However, according to Miss Jensen's testimony, the conductor's mask exposed a small part of his face. In addition... Well, she thought there had been a tattoo there. It's possible that she simply mistook the burn, burn mark for a tattoo. Burn mark on his face? Objection. It's so very scintillating. But I'm afraid you're getting excited over nothing, you know? None of the PIC members have any burn marks on their faces, you see. Naturally, that includes me as well, you know. Huh? Pops? But... Sebastian, could you please be quiet? If you're an idiot, then act like one, you know? 
Normally, Sebastian is a nuisance to everyone around him. This time, I owe him my gratitude. That reaction from Blaze's own son. It reveals the truth more clearly than anything else. Thanks to him, I am confident that my reasoning is, per is correct. I know who that unidentified piece of evidence belongs to. I wonder what's wrong with that prosecutor. Usually, Sebastian is slower to arrive at the truth than everyone else. However, in this time, he has probably figured it out. His own father is a criminal. Since he knows the truth, he's in pain, isn't he? If he didn't know the truth, he could have remained blissful in his ignorance. Hey, we are here in order to pursue the truth. It doesn't matter what path my reasoning takes. The important thing is to arrive at the truth. Once before, when I lost faith in my reasoning, he said that to me and showed me the way. This time, I shall show you the truth. You are innocent. I... I also want to know the truth. Mr. Edgeworth, please tell me. Yes, that's the spirit. It's impossible, you know. For all of you. I mean... Just where could I possibly have a burn mark? There's nowhere to be found, you see. There's no evidence to prove that I'm the culprit, you know. Th that's right. There's no contradiction at all. There's no way there could be a contradiction. Not for my pops. Sebastian, I understand why you don't want to admit it. However, if you advert your eyes from the truth, you will regret it forever. Pops, I... Just what should I do? Huh. I really wonder. You're such an idiot, you know? Sebastian, if you really want to save me, you'll have to try a little bit harder, you see? Gotta use your head, you know? Honestly, you really are a useless idiot. N no way! But I tried real hard! I tried my best, Pops! I went to the school you told me to go to. I, I, re I reached the top of my class just like you told me to. Just look at this jacket. Only someone who graduates at the, at the top of his class gets to wear it. I did everything you told me to do. That's how I got to be the best at the academy. I even won all those awards just so I could be like you, Pops. Objection. You really are such an idiot, you know. You know, those gold stars you got on your tests. I made the teachers give them to you. Every speech and debate contest, all of the judges were my friends. You know, Sebastian, if you weren't even able to notice something like that... You're really not worthy of being called my son, don't you think? <laughs> Baby. Aw, oh, even my son has disappeared. <laughs> oh my, it's enough to make me cry, you know. He was trying his best for me, and yet it was totally useless, you know. You are truly a despicable, despicable person. As the chairman of the PIC, and as a father. Even I feel sorry for that foolish prosecutor. Poor Mr. Prosecutor. Blaze the best, you. Just what do you think of your own son? He's just a useless pawn, you see. Whoa, now, maybe you should look in the mirror before you criticize me, you know? I mean, even you. You also used Sebastian to get close to me, didn't you? I cannot deny that. However, he is not a mere pawn. He always tries to do his very best, <laughs> even if the results aren't up to par. It's at this point you just realize you've been playing as Courtney the entire time. Not like in the game, but like as yourself. You've been Courtney the entire time. <laughs> I've seen just how hard he tries. And yet, you refuse to even acknowledge it. Objection. That kid is no good, you see. No matter what he does, or is told to do. Prosecutor Edgeworth, 
I shall leave this offering to the goddess of law to you. Deliver her divine judgment against Blaze the Best. Yes, that was my intention from the beginning. There was a burn mark on the conductor's face. And Blaze the Best must be hiding it. What was he wearing during the auction? That is the key to revealing the truth. Well then, allow me to hear your answer. Please show the piece of evidence that proves the culprit had a burn mark on his face. Karen, 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 what should you say again? Ah, for some reason there was both a straight wig and a wavy wig. But since Miss Crane's hair is straight, the wavy wig was left unused. If you would recall Miss Jensen test Jensen's testimony, there is still one point that remains unexplained. It's a fucking wig. Two types of wigs had been prepared, one of which was left unused. Do you mean the way we do you mean the way we wig? What are you talking about? It was something Miss Jensen found when she switched places with the victim. What does something like that have to do with the burn? Inside the costume trunk, Miss Jensen witnessed two wigs. One of them had been used by Miss Jensen to make her look like the victim. Now then, just what was the other wig used for? It doesn't seem like it was a spare wig. There's no need to overthink it. Just compare the attire of the true culprit, the conductor, with that of Blaze the Best. Don't stir at me like that. Don't you think there's just one spot where there is a huge contradiction? Specifically, around his face. So that's... Not a wig at all. Indeed, it was no wig. Place the best. It was your fake beard. This is a real beard, you know? Don't tease me like that, Ashworth. Your son must have realized the truth before anyone else. That's why he was trying so desperately to protect you. You were also worried that he would tell the truth. Isn't that why you drove your son away from here? Because he knew that his father was hiding a burn under his fake beard. <laughs> Blaze the best. How about you remove that fake beard of yours? Mark. Prosecutor Edgeworth, justice has been served before the goddess of law. For that, I give you my thanks. I should be the one thanking you. Place the best. I hereby announce my verdict. You shall be taken into custody for the murder of Jill Crane. Was, was was the fucking burn mark really a fucking skull? Mr. Edgeworth, thank you very much. I'm so happy that you believed in me to the very end. There's no need to thank me. As a prosecutor. No, as a friend, I simply wanted to save you. Uh... Prosecutor Edgeworth, I bring good tidings. It seems that former Chairman De Best has been safely detained in the, deten in the detention center. However, the search for the murder weapon, the auction gavel, continues. Lace De Best is a shrewd man. There is a good chance that he has already disposed of it. There is also one piece of testimony that concerns me. Blaze the Best mentioned that the only thing he did not fake were the letters. What do you mean? First, he found this letter in Jill Crane's cl clothes. Then he also found this letter on Kay, who was unconscious in the storeroom. 
The contents of the letters seem to suggest that the two had been corresponding with each other. Which is why Blaze the Best assumed that you two were working together. Ridiculous. That can't be right. After reading the two letters, he decided to pin the crime on Kay for a day. In order to cast suspicion on her, he planted one of the letters in a noticeable spot. The deceased Jill Crane's left breast pocket. Why not put it in the right one and just, like, not get that contradiction at all? Dumbass. Isn't that just an excuse? Yes, that is what I thought as well. It may have simply been a last-ditch effort to save himself. However, before the stern eyes of the Goddess of Law, there are, these are trivial matters. His crime shall certainly not go unpunished. With this, I have finally fulfilled one of my long-standing missions. Judge Courtney, will you tell me what you know? Why did Blaze the best murder Jill Crane? And what lies hidden behind this case? Yes, I don't mind. You have the right to know everything. Long ago, Jill Crane was in love with a cameraman. That man was pursuing the black market auction as a journalist. And then, before he could reach the truth, he was erased. Feelings and the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. Although in the end, she was the one who was murdered instead. I see, so that's what happened. While the goddess of law cannot condone her actions, we have succeeded in her goal of bringing Blaze the Best's crime to light. So Judge Courtney's goal was to expose Blaze the Best and reveal the dark secrets of the PIC. Yo, she fucking been undercover cover all this fucking time. Um, by the way, what happened to the young prosecutor? We have been unable to contact him for some time now. Do you have any idea where he might be? I... had not been truly working for him, so... I see. I feel very sorry for him. What you should be sorry for is the fact that he was kept in the dark until now. No matter how cruel reality is, he will have to accept it. If he can't, he won't be able to walk his own path in life. Eva. Father's influence is not something that is easily erased. However, I'm sure he will be able to change from here on out. Yes, that's right. Surely, you must be right. Will I too be able to walk my own path in life? Kay, is your body alright? Yes, thanks to you. I'm so sorry, even though you're my patient. You ended up getting suspected because of me. Ouch! You can't just take care of the patient's body, you gotta take care of the heart too. It's my granny! Kay, how are your memories? I feel like I'm on the verge of remembering something. Well then, I shall take my leave here. I will be presiding over Patricia Rowland's trial. That would be the trial for the murder of Horace Knightley. I was in charge of the defense. Miss Crane was supposed to be her defense attorney, but now that she has passed away, we are currently arranging for a replacement defense attorney. So Crane had been in charge of Patricia Rowland's defense. I'll also have to get in contact with Sebastian quickly, since he's the prosecutor in charge. Well then... Huh? Please, wait! What about Mr. Edgeworth's prosecutor's badge? What will happen to his prosecutor's badge? With the chairman's arrest, the PIC is no longer functional. So I cannot answer that question easily. Perhaps someone could say... Only the goddess of law knows. But that's... You don't need to worry about me. This is the path that I have chosen. It seems you have no plans to ch change it either. Of course not. 
I chose this path to seek the truth. With the departure of Blaze the Best, the law has once again returned to our hands. If you truly desire to continue the prosecu prosecutor's path, I am willing to assist you in reclaiming your badge. I appreciate the sentiment, but I must decline. I did not relinquish my badge with half-hearted half feelings. I see. It seems that our paths of law will continue to run counter to each other. <laughs> Until our paths cross once again, I shall have you hold onto that badge. That was my intention from the start. However, on occasion, the goddess of law is quite generous. Please return this notebook to its proper owner. Case promise notebook. It seems this was scheduled to be put up for bidding at the black market auction. The name K is written in on the notebook. It seems Blaze the Best quickly realized this belonged to the girl. Since the letters he found also contained the same name. You speak as if you really did not know about the letters. You're saying that Blaze really did not prepare the letters himself. Yes, the man said so himself. K Faraday's goal was to seal back the notebook. Jill Crane's goal was to get revenge. In order to achieve their goals, the two teamed up to infiltrate the auction, or so he says. Unfortunately, this was all Blaze's misunderstanding. It was purely a coincidence. If the attorney from the PIC and Kay really were acquaintances, it would be strange that she never mentioned it to me, considering her personality. <laughs> you really do trust her, don't you? In the end, the notebook was used as another red herring, but it's something that is very important to that girl, isn't it? I'll make a special exception and return it. I'm sure that's what the Goddess of Law desires. That's, um, I appreciate it. I shall pray that she recovers her lost memories. Is something wrong? Okay, I am returning something very important to you. Huh, this is... Whiskery people with a smile. Even people you don't know. Never cry in front of strangers. Look, Daddy, I wrote them all down. Yep, I'll be sure to follow all of our promises and become a hero just like you, Daddy. Oh, that's right. There was one more. I forgot to write down the most important promise. Promise number five. Always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. <laughs> I'll be sure to remember. I'll never, ever forget them. Please try your hardest to learn things you don't understand. That's right, I'm... I... I am... I am... The great thief who steals the truth, K for a day. I am the second Yatagarasu and Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. K, you remember? <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing though. Thank you so much. It's all thanks to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Even when I lost my memories, you were still always trying to save me, right? <laughs> it seems you're back to normal. Okay, you've gotten better. Your health comes first. Now you can relax. Just make sure you don't run off and lose all your memories again. Ah, Miss Jensen, Dr. Young. Thanks for worrying about me. Hey, if you're feeling all better, how about changing back into your own clothes? I washed your clothes for you, K. So they're nice and clean. These clothes. Wasn't Detective Gumshoe holding onto them? He said forensics was done with them, so he gave them back to me. Have they revealed the results of the analysis yet? Hmm, to be honest, I actually didn't think to ask about that. Now, now, more importantly, let's hurry up and get you changed, K. Hmm, still. 
Isn't it better if you do not remove her bandages? Ah, she should be fine now. Kay just bumped her head. She didn't really have any other major injuries. Then why was she so heavily bandaged? Better safe than sorry. A pound of prevention is worth an ounce of cure. That's my motto. What a troublesome motto. Come on, Kay. Let's get you dressed up over, over there. Now this is definitely what a great thief should look like. A smile certainly suits you best. In the past, and now as well. It's from Karma. Thank you for coming too. Uh, I, I, I only came because Scruffy asked me to. Uh, Scruffy, he also wanted to see your energetic self again. Gummy, what happened to Gummy? Who knows? Maybe he was disgusted with the man who willingly threw away his prosecutor's badge. Detective Gumshoe. I must be going soon. I'll be taking these ladies in for questioning. Ah, oh, what's gonna happen to the two of them? One aided in the murder of an attorney. The other forged an autopsy report 18 years ago. Most crimes definitely won't disappear. Of course, I will mention in court that they were being blackmailed by Blaze. You'll be just fine. As long as Granny's by my side, we're invincible. Well then, take care. Now then, Kay. Sorry to ask so soon right after you regained your memories, but I have some questions. Sure, ask me anything you want. What were you doing on the day you lost your memories? On that day, I was asked to come to Gord Lake. I don't know who called me there, though. As I was watching the moon at Gord Lake, a person in a red raincoat approached me. All of a sudden, he used some kind of drug to knock me out. What? What is she saying? The place where Kay saw the moon was at Gord Lake. When I woke up, it seems I somehow ended up in on the roof of the, of the Grand Tower. My mind was still in the daze, so I stumbled around for a bit. That's when I found the person in the red raincoat. Collapsed. I was startled. And when I stepped back in panic, I fell from a high place and got knocked out cold again. And when I woke up, my memories were gone. The person in the red raincoat. Who exactly was that person? Oh yeah, I was certain that I saw them t walking in midair. Hmm. Somehow, this is all starting to make my head hurt. Please calm down. You're just a little confused because you've only recently gotten your memories back. Most likely, this is the main cause of your confused memories. This is probably the cause, main cause of your confused memories. You saw the moon at both the Gord Lake Park and the Grand Tower rooftop, which led you to confuse the two places. Huh? But aren't they totally different places? Even if I was in the daze, do you really think I'd get them confused? Most likely there was something at the Grand Tower which led to your confusion. The Grand Tower rooftop and Gord Lake have two points in common. They both have a cherry tree and a food store. Now that you mention it... Your memories were confused because you had been in two similar locations. The person that you first saw could not have been walking in midair. They were simply walking on the ground at Gord Lake Park. You must have gotten that scene confused with the Grand Tower rooftop. S that's what happened! How dare they steal the memories of a great thief! They'll pay for this! Nevertheless, I wonder who the person that assaulted Kay was. The person in the red raincoat, who appeared at Gord Lake. How does that not make any sense? Hmm? What's that noise? It sounds like it's coming from the storeroom. Miss Redworth, let's go check it out! What's this? My shutterbug sends a tingling. I spell me another scoop. You're still here. I 
I mean, sure, you can get your memories, like, mixed up. Anyways, you're back in the storm. Mr. Edgeworth, this walkie-talkie thing here is... what's beeping? Hmm, this transceiver. Why do I feel like I've seen it somewhere before? It's still beeping, Mr. Edgeworth! I'm not particularly familiar with this sort of device. Come on, we have to answer it! Here goes! Hello? Edgeworth speaking! Oh no, sorry, I have to- I have to do his, uh... Voice, whatever. K-K, please don't just answer it on your own. You speak with Mr. Miles Edgeworth, I presume? Voices. Shelly the Killer! I congratulate you on resolving the case. However, can you truly say in good conscience that it has been solved? Are you aware of the mastermind who is pulling the strings behind this incident? You. Why do you know about the incident? That's not important right now. Wouldn't you agree? Right now, we're discussing the mastermind behind this case. I've had an inkling that such a person existed, even before you said anything. After all, there was evidence to suggest that someone had used Kay to disrupt the investigation. Huh? There was? So... Who's this mastermind? I would like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Would you kindly show me the evidence that indicates the, the existence of the mastermind? Take that! It was the letter that Kay allegedly sent to the victim. Come to think of it, I don't remember writing that letter at all. Who could have prepared this letter? I, too, am quite curious to know. But you're not the one who wrote the letter. What could I possibly gain from doing such an act? Is it not necessary for you to stand in court in order to make the truth clear? What can you possibly do, now that your badge has been taken from you? I look forward to finding out from the shadows. This man, how does he know that? Do we have an understanding? Please ensure you do not betray my trust. Now then, if you'll excuse me. He said the case wasn't solved yet. What did he mean by that? Now why would Mr. the Killer even bother telling us that? Ugh, nothing makes sense anymore. This case has not reached its true conclusion yet. However, although I've lost my prosecutor's badge, who I am still has not changed. Well, I don't know where this may lead me. I shall reveal the truth. I swear it. And we only have one episode left. And who oh boy, it's a doozy. Then I'm doing this tomorrow. <laughs> Oh god, fucking beautiful, truly. Oh my god. So, yeah. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, the next one should have, like, four parts. It should be, like, relatively short. Or something. Um... Oh no, five, okay. But, like, how is... Eh, nah, it's not that long. The first part, second part. Oh, oh, that's kind of long, though. Well, I will, I will at least, like... <sighs> yeah, chapter-wise was, was the Gregory case. But the longest one out of all of them 
was the fucking second case that was four chapters. What is that bullshit? I am still like losing my mind over that. Oh my god, hold on, wait, let me put on some fucking music. Oh my god. Ugh. Oh, 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 oh. Hi. 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 What happened there? <laughs> That's fine. I can't type either. Um, but yeah, it's only five hours. I finally managed to cut my streaming time in two. Well, almost, you know. It's closer to six hours, but I'm fine with that considering there were six chapters. Or six parts or whatever you want to fucking call them. Oh my god. My goal will be to like finish this game. <laughs> it's not 11 hours. <laughs> yeah, my goal will be to finish this game tomorrow. But if I can't, I will just do it on Monday, you know. Like hopefully I can get like at least halfway if I can't finish it. Hmm. Yeah, I know, right? It's like passed by so quickly. <laughs> and then it's Apollo Justice time. Woo! And I'm excited. Very, very excited. <laughs> So, yeah. I think I'm finally... Uh... I'm not saying anything. the spoilers so like why should i like spoil it for you i'm not i'm not gonna spoil it for you what i wonder about though however is um uh, actually i don't actually wonder that much about it but i'm just like kind of curious have I streamed every single day this week? I believe I have. March 8th. Yeah, that was Monday. Oh my god. I don't know, like... <sighs> um, maybe I can start, like, really early? No, they weren't short streams, that's the thing, I literally wake up at 5! <laughs> I wake up at 5 p.m., get up, like, fucking eat whatever the fuck I can find, sit down, stream, and then I sit up until fucking 6 a.m. No, actually, I sit up until 10 a.m. because I don't fucking go to bed like a normal person. And then <laughs> it just <laughs> repeats. It's like I stream more than I sleep. I stream more than I sleep. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. Oh god. I. <laughs> oh 
god. Yeah, well, mm, you know, it'd be like that, I guess. I am so excited to finish this game, though. And if I don't, then I don't. Anyways, turns out... Yeah, everything is gonna be connected and you're just gonna be like... Huh? But like, now when I was playing it again, I was like, Oh! Oh, that makes sense! But like, I'm not... I'm sitting here with like a complete poker face. Like, just like, okay. You know, just like... Huh? <laughs> Like trying to like act confused at times. Sometimes I actually am confused because I didn't I, I swear to god I did not remember that Courtney turned out to be a good character <laughs> I was like Courtney Courtney like okay Oh my god. I like want to like tell you to like look into like something but it, not not that it's like a yeah, it's kind of spoiler, but yeah. <laughs> Courtney at the end of that chapter, like, or the episode was like, Courtney. And when she stood up for Sebastian, I was like, yes. Yes, queen shit. Yes, we stand. <laughs> That is our girl! <laughs> oh my god. Well then, maybe... Hmm. Oh god, that would... Um, that would just be suicide on my fucking part. If I'm gonna start, like, streaming even earlier, just in case the, the, the episode is, like, really long. I mean, it's gonna be suicide for me anyway. <laughs> but like, you know, I don't know. Sleep rooms are important. I know. I know. It would just be kind of funny if I managed to like finish both investigations game in a week. Yeah, I actually. Dude, we started on Monday with the first Investigations game. I'm just putting that out there. I did, like, the entire- the first Investigations game was three episodes. Like, three streams. I finished it in three streams. Yes. <laughs> and this was the third stream of- yeah, no, it adds up. It fucking adds up. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my god. So we have like, um, as he said, turns my hand as if that's gonna make any difference. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That was the first investigations game. And then. Uh, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, that's, that's the, uh, Investigations 2, and, uh, Sunday. You know, then we will have finished, like, both of them in, in a week. We just, like, I'm like, should I, like, finish tomorrow? But, like, what if it's, like, really long? I don't know. It really was all this week. <laughs> Oh my god. It's okay though, I had I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. 
But now I'm just kind of like obsessing over it. Just like, oh no, I need to, I need to finish it. I need to finish it by this week. <laughs> On Monday? No. Oh, it doesn't work. That doesn't fucking work. <laughs> but but it's, it's literally fine. It, <laughs> I don't know why I'm like obsessing over it. I'm just like, no. Sunday. Finishing the shit. And I'm like, no. <laughs> if it's too long. Stop the game. Go the fuck to bed. <laughs> you know, like. <sighs> and actually if we end it on monday if we if, if i can't finish it tomorrow if i end it on monday instead if if it's like really like if i'm over it like if i get through it like really fast then i can start apollo justice because i, I like streaming for at least like a few hours you know um so like if it's like only like two hours, I'm probably gonna start Apollo Justice and finish the first case, which is not long at all. Uh, and I can like share like what I felt when I played Apollo Justice for the first time, and I was just crying. <laughs> I was just crying. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get the tutorial case. Yeah, exactly. It's not very long. So, who knows? Who knows? And Apollo Justice is a really short game in general. Only only four episodes. So. You know. And what I can do for, like, when I upload it to YouTube. I can just, like, upload it, like, twice. And once it has some... Um, it has uh, uploaded properly i can just like use the youtube editor or whatever and just like clip it to where apollo justice starts and like clip away the part with apollo justice from like the, the the investigation stream so i just like have like two different because i don't two different videos because i i don't like to like have like several games in one video you know game It's just an idea I have though. So we will see tomorrow. I'm like planning way far. I'm like, I'm awful. I'm fucking, first of all, I'm really bad at planning. But when I plan, I plan. Like, <laughs> when I went to Japan, uh, hold on. Do I have, I was, God, the fucking, all the planning I did for when I went to Japan. It was insane. Let's see here if I can find it. Back in 2019, for the back. We have a Japan, we have, yeah, we have a Japan uh, budget. And I was literally like, okay, so for like all the things that I know I'm going to like spend money on, which is like concert tickets, a bus, train, um, What's it called? Like customs, uh, gas money, which didn't end up being a thing, but hotels and like various like concert goods. I uh, calculated that I would spend 50,000 yen, actually 50,150 yen, which sounds like a lot, but uh, it is a lot, but, <laughs> but I calculated that. And that was like with like all the things I had to buy for like other people too because they also wanted some like uh, uh, concert goods. And also, I guess I don't have it here though, but like I planned out like a week in advance No, 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 I could never do that. But I just, like, need to, like, know the plans ahead of time. So, like, for the trains, I had planned exactly which train I was gonna take. 
And like my friend was like, but like when is the train? I'm going I'm just like, like Listen, I know when the train is going. You don't need to ask them. I have it here. I have it written down. <laughs> so <laughs> It's in the schedule. Yeah, exactly. It was like, okay, we need we have X amount of time in that place and then we have to go get the train and she had to like double check it and i'm like bitch i fucking did all the research can you just stop <laughs> like for me that causes so much less anxiety and it just makes me feel like I'm more in control, I guess. So it does add up. It makes sense, you know. Let's see here. If I can find the screenshots I took back then of the... Uh, Yeah, like if my mom shows up at my place and is like, hey, you want to go out shopping with me? I'm like, like, I don't know what to do with myself. It's awful. Damn it, I can't have just like deleted it, right? Wait, like, when did I plan it? <laughs> How far ahead did I plan this? When is this actually? Oh, it's just January. <laughs> yeah, like if you're if you if your plans are to do nothing, then you're doing nothing. Oh, I found it, I found it, I found it. Okay. So... When I first came to uh, Japan, I had to like stay the night at like a capsule hotel at the airport. And at 7.47 the next morning, I would have to get up and get the train into Shibuya where I was gonna meet my, my friend. And for uh, s s magically, I don't know how I managed to do this, considering uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't jet lagged or anything. That's also the thing. I don't I didn't get jet lagged. How that is possible, I don't know. Maybe it's because I don't have like a sleep like a, a sleep schedule to begin with. So maybe. Um, but yeah, after that, huh? God. I, I we we landed around 10 I believe so I just like checked in took a shower and then went to bed and woke up and I had just the perfect amount of time to get down to the platform and and take the train it was no sleep schedule to fuck up <laughs> So like I met my friend in Shibuya at 9.30, which is kind of a bit too early because sh shops don't open until 10. So then I was like, okay, we need like some time in Tokyo before we leave for take the train to our friend. And so at 14.36, we, we were to get the Shinkansen up to Shin Hanamaki.
My mom was like shocked that I had planned it so well. I mean, not that I blame her, like I was insanity. Anyways, with that, I am gonna end it. And uh, yeah, attempting to finish the game tomorrow. Yes, get some rest. I'm also hungry. I, I've only like had a hot dog today and the canelbula. So. You know. Huh. <sighs> Yes, you too. Sleep well. And I'll see you tomorrow.